grand adventure. Brian and Peter were spending their summer holidays with their cousin Sam, who lived near the sea. There are many islands nearby. Let's ask Dad if we can picnic on one of them, said Sam. Sam's father gave them his permission. Early the next morning, the cousins set off on their island adventure. They rowed Sam's boat for about an hour until they neared a small island. They quickly secured the boat and scrambled onto the mossy land. Let's eat first, then we can explore the island, said Sam. Suddenly, Brian cried out in alarm. The island was shaking. Could it be an earthquake? What's happening, Sam? shouted Peter in fright. The cousins quickly jumped into the boat and started rowing back. Imagine their shock when they looked back and saw their island heave up and then dive into the water. It was not an island but a monster whale. Storm in the Night Alan and his friend Max decided to go camping in a nearby forest. After trekking the whole day, they reached a clearing. This looks like a good place to camp, said Max. The boys pitched their tent and started a small campfire. Soon after, they ate and fell asleep. A few hours later, they were woken up by a horrible howling sound. What is that? Could it be a wild animal? Alan asked Max in panic. Cautiously, the boys unzipped the tent and peeped outside. The sky was dark with storm clouds and strong winds was whipping up dust and leaves into terrifying spirals. Luckily, the boys' tent was sheltered and did not get blown away. The storm continued all night long and the boys did not sleep a wink. But the next morning was bright and clear. There was no sign that such a violent storm had passed through the night. Left All Alone once a sailor named Tom and his merchant friends boarded a ship. The ship went from island to island making good bargains and sales. One day it landed on a strange land which was covered with fruit trees and freshwater springs. While his companions gathered fruits, Tom lay down under a shady tree and fell asleep. When he woke up, he was shocked to see that he was alone. The ship had left without him. He wondered how to escape from this island. He climbed up a tall tree and looked anxiously around for his ship. Fortunately, he could still see it in the distance. It has not gone too far yet, thought Tom. I will wave my colorful scarf from the top of the tree. Maybe they will see it. Luckily for Tom, his friends saw the scarf. They came back and rescued Tom. Swiss Adventure Alison and Gemma had been chosen to represent their school at a conference in Switzerland. They had a wonderful time there and met students from many different countries. On their last day in Switzerland, they were all taken sightseeing. The students particularly enjoyed the view from the Jungfrau mountain. They were all given refreshments at a pretty little tea house near the mountain peak. But Gemma could hardly eat a thing. Look there, she whispered. I think I have seen that man somewhere before. Could he be a criminal? The girls shivered in fear and decided to call the police. But as they tiptoed towards the phone booth outside the tea house, Alison slipped. As she hung onto the guardrail, the same man rushed out and saved her life. The two girls thanked him over and over again. They felt a little foolish for their suspicion, but had a good laugh about it later. The Spanish Galleon Millie and her family were spending the summer holidays on the island of Mayoka. One day, there was a great storm. The next morning, Millie woke very early and saw that the storm had died down. She decided to take a walk. Millie saw a strange dark shape on the beach. At first, she thought it might be a sea lion or whale. But when she came closer, she was surprised. It looked like the wreck of a huge ship. She immediately ran home and woke her father, who was an archaeologist. He was very excited and told Millie, This is no ordinary ship, my dear. It is a Spanish galleon. It must be at least 500 years old. Last night's storm probably brought it up from the seabed. Sure enough, it was a great discovery 
and Millie became well known as the girl who found the Spanish galleon. It happened at the airport. Stella had never been on a flight alone before. Luckily, Mrs. Biggs, the lady sitting next to her on the plane, was very friendly and kind. When the plane landed, all the passengers made their way to the customs officers for checking. Mrs. Biggs seemed very flustered as she tried to repack her bag. I needed some medicines from my bag and now I can't shut it, she said in despair. Shall I take some of your things? I have plenty of space, offered Stella. Oh, that would be wonderful, said Mrs. Biggs. She handed over a small bag with her toiletries. To pack it in properly, Stella removed the toothpaste and stuck it into a corner of her bag. Soon they had passed through customs and Stella returned the toiletries bag. However, she accidentally gave her the wrong tube of toothpaste. The next morning, Stella got a shock. When she squeezed the toothpaste, something small and hard came out. It was a diamond. She called the police at once and they found that the tube of toothpaste actually had 50 small diamonds hidden in it. Mrs. Biggs was a smuggler. Desert Adventure Harun was travelling with a huge caravan through the desert. Suddenly, a sandstorm hit the caravan and everything was engulfed in sand. Thrown off his camel, Harun was separated from the others and completely lost. It was afternoon and the sun was torturously hot. I must walk and find an oasis, thought Harun. With each step, he grew more and more thirsty. Suddenly, in the shimmering heat of the desert, Harun saw water. He ran towards it, but it seemed to move farther away. Gasping for breath, Harun realized that it was a mirage. His lips were parched and his eyes could hardly stay open. Water, he croaked, before fainting. When Harun woke up, he could not believe his eyes. He was in an oasis. A kind merchant had rescued him. Harun thanked him and said, If it hadn't been for you, I would never have survived the journey through the desert. The Island of Gold John's grandfather often told him stories about the wonderful places he had visited as a young man. The most amazing of these was the Island of Gold. Years passed and grandfather died, but he left behind a wooden box for John. Inside was a compass, a paper and some gold coins. When he opened the paper, John was amazed. It was a map for the Island of Gold. John flew to Peru and from there he hired a small fishing boat. Following the directions in his grandfather's map, he soon found himself in the middle of a set of tiny islands that do not appear on any map. The brightest, most beautiful island was the island of gold. Instead of being greedy and trying to carry away all the wealth, John just took away a few chunks of gold. This made him rich enough to live a happy and comfortable life. The Injured Bird Roger and his sister Susan were spending their summer holidays with their grandmother. She had a beautiful little cottage on the beach. One day, while searching for seashells on the beach, Susan spotted a bundle. She called out to Roger, Come quickly, it looks like a bird. Susan had found a seagull whose feathers were covered with oil. Because of this, it could not fly and had become too weak to move. Let us take it home. Granny will know what to do, said Roger. When Granny saw the bird, she said, This poor bird must have got caught in an oil spill. We must clean its wings carefully. Granny wiped the bird clean and then fed it some fish. The bird seemed much better and started cleaning itself with its own beak. Within a few hours, the seagull spread its wings and with a loud cry flew away. Sinbad and the Gigantic Bird Sinbad was a sailor who had a lot of strange adventures. Once, he was in a deserted island when he saw a shiny white dome in the distance. When he went closer to it, he found that it was a huge egg. Sinbad wondered, what bird could lay such a big egg? Just then, there was a loud flapping sound and the gigantic bird flew down and sat on the egg. Sinbad got a brilliant idea. 
he quietly went and sat close to the bird's legs. He thought, when the bird flies away, she will carry me with her. Just as he had hoped, the bird flew off early the next morning and Sinbad held the bird's feet. When they flew over the valley of diamonds, Sinbad jumped down. He quickly picked up a few large diamonds and walked till he reached the nearest town. There he sold the diamonds and earned enough money to live comfortably for many years. The Snowman What a lot of fun we've had in the snow today, cried Mary as she, her brother and sister came into their cottage. Brr, it was cold though. My hands are frozen, remarked Kate. I loved rolling the snow into balls and then making snowmen out of them, said Peter with satisfaction. Children come and have hot milk and bread, then off to bed, said their mother. The tired children went to their rooms and were soon fast asleep. During the night, Peter got up to have a drink of water. He looked out of the window and was frightened to see some men standing in their garden. He crept up to his parents' room. Wake up, Dad, he whispered. I think there are thieves outside. Startled, his father picked his torch up and crept out. As he shone his torch, he burst out laughing. Peter, these thieves are the snowmen you built today. The Short Dollar Saloon The small town of Hope was full of cowboys, prospectors and criminals. New people passed through the town almost every day. Because of this, fights were common. One day, a stranger walked into a saloon and sat at the bar. Two of the local cowboys decided to pick a fight with him. Never seen you here before, said one. Probably just rolled in from the country, I reckon, said the other. Let him be. He's too scared even to talk to us. The stranger casually took out a dollar coin from his pocket and tossed it in the air. Before anyone realized what he was doing, he drew a gun from his holster and shot the coin while it was still in the air. No one had seen such excellent shooting before. The cowboys ran away scared. From that day, the saloon came to be known as the Short Dollar Saloon. The House Next Door It was the first day of the holidays and Nathan had fallen ill. For two days, Nathan was too ill to do much except sleep. On the third day, however, he felt much better. From his room, Nathan had a clear view of the house next door. It had been empty for months, so Nathan was surprised to see a small red van drive there that morning. Within five minutes, the van drove away. Nathan wondered, why would the van stop at that empty house? He decided to watch the house carefully. Around noon, he heard a scream and saw a scrap of green ribbon fluttering from the upstairs window. He was sure it had not been there before. Nathan immediately called the police and told them everything. They found that a little girl had been kidnapped and hidden in the house next door. But because of Nathan, she was rescued. Egyptian Adventure Anna had always dreamt of going to Egypt. She saved money for years until she finally was able to afford a trip to Cairo. Though the weather was very hot and she did not know much Arabic, yet Anna was very happy. After spending a few days at Cairo, she decided to visit the pyramids at Giza. The pyramids were even more beautiful than she had imagined. She thought, these are some of the most beautiful structures made by mankind. It is so sad that they have been robbed. Anna was walking towards the taxis when she tripped over a loose stone. Surprised to see a stone slab in the middle of the sand, Anna started digging. She uncovered a wooden box full of beautiful Egyptian artifacts. She thought, it seems that these were stolen from the pyramids years ago and hidden there by the thief. She immediately took them to the police and offered the box to the museum. Arctic Adventure Flight R675 flew tourists over the Arctic Circle five times a week. The plane had all the latest gadgets to help it fly even in bad weather. However, today, the pilot David was worried. They had started out with clear skies, 
but soon he had seen storm clouds on the horizon. He decided to turn the plane around, but it was too late. With a shudder, the plane was hit by the icy arctic winds. One of the wings was ripped off and the plane went into a tailspin. David only had moments to save the passenger from a fatal crash. He managed to guide the falling plane towards a patch of water near a scientific outpost. None was hurt, but they all had to trek through the terrible storm to reach the scientific outpost. They could hardly believe it when 24 hours later they were rescued and flown home. The chief and the girl. A long time ago, the chief of a tribe was taken prisoner by another tribe. Before the elders of the second tribe could kill him, a beautiful young girl came up to them. She said, By our law, a prisoner can be freed if he marries a girl from our tribe. I will marry this prisoner. The elders of the second tribe agreed. However, that same evening, a third enemy tribe attacked them. The chief of the first tribe escaped. But the beautiful girl was taken prisoner. The chief of the first tribe came up with a plan. He pretended to be a doctor and went to the camp of the third tribe. They asked him to cure their prisoner who was very sick. It was the same girl that he wanted to save. He declared, she is very ill. I must not be disturbed while I treat her. That night, the two quietly slipped away and returned to his home, safe and sound. The Proud Soldier A soldier was very proud of his bravery. Once, he was marching with his army to fight against a neighboring kingdom. On the way, they passed by a village set on a high cliff. Since it was already evening, the army camped there for the night. The soldier found it very difficult to sleep, so he decided to take a walk. As he walked near the cliff, he was surprised to see a group of children. He saw that they tied a rope to a rock and then swung down the rope. He decided to follow them. But when he tried to go down the rope, it swung so much because of the wind that he got dizzy. The children saw him and steadied the rope. But the soldier felt foolish and realized that the adventurous children were braver than he. From that day onwards, he was no longer so arrogant. Bigfoot Wallace Bigfoot Wallace lived in Texas. Once he camped near a river. The Comanche tribe came in the dead of the night and stole away all his horses. When he woke up, Wallace was furious and decided to teach the Comanches a lesson. When he reached the Comanche camp, Wallace had an idea. There were many hickory nuts on the ground, so he stuffed his clothes with them, forming a shield. Once he was well protected, he moved forward into the camp. Drawing his guns, he stepped out from behind a tree and started shooting. The Comanches had not expected such an attack. They quickly ran and gathered their bows and arrows. But not one arrow could pierce Bigfoot Wallace's armor. Soon the Comanches had no more arrows and they ran away in fright. Wallace took back all his horses and the Comanches never bothered him again. Tom's Journey Tom was a poor orphan who wanted to go to the city. One day, Tom saw a stranger passing through the village. Tom asked him, Are you going to the city? Can you take me with you? The stranger agreed and soon they were on their way. The path was long and they had to pass through a forest. Even though it was midday, the forest was as dark as night. Suddenly, a band of robbers stopped Tom and the stranger. Give us all your money. They demanded. Tom had no money, but he was brave. He pretended to be scared, but when the robbers were close enough, he hit them with a stick. To his surprise, the stranger took out a gun and captured the robbers. Tom found out that the stranger was actually a police officer. The officer took Tom with him to the city, and after a few years, Tom also joined the police. The Cat's Adventure Before leaving on a voyage, a merchant asked his servants, Is there anything you want me to take along to trade for you? All the others offered money or goods. 
but Joe offered his cat. Soon the cat was sailing with the merchant in his huge ship. The cat was very happy with the adventure of looking for mice. He chased them from nooks and corners and ate them all up. However, soon he became bored and started wishing for some new adventure where he could eat more mice. One day, the merchant landed at a far-off port. The palace was overrun by mice, and no one knew how to get rid of them. The cat was delighted. Within four days, he had eaten up all the mice in the palace. The king was so relieved that he gave the merchant a huge reward. Thus, the cat's adventure made him, the merchant, and Joe very happy. Sinbad and the Elephants. Sinbad the sailor was once captured by pirates who sold them as a slave. An ivory merchant caught him and said, "I will teach you how to capture elephants for ivory." For a month, he made Sinbad shoot elephants. When they died, the merchant would take their ivory tusks and sell them. One day, something strange happened. An elephant caught Sinbad and started walking towards a nearby hill. Sinbad thought. They are going to take revenge for the elephants I have killed. However, to his surprise, the elephants did not harm him. They took him to the elephant graveyard, where he saw piles of ivory lying around. The elephant then let him go. When Sinbad showed the ivory merchant the place, he said, "With so much ivory, I never need to kill another elephant as long as I live." He freed Sinbad and gave him a lot of money as a reward. Sinbad and the birds. Sinbad and his crew were sailing through the ocean when they came to an island. The sky was stormy, so they decided to camp on the island for a few days. While searching for fresh water, some of the sailors found a huge white egg. Sinbad said, "Don't touch that egg. It belongs to a bird as huge as a mountain. I have seen one before." But the other sailors ignored him and cooked the egg. They had just finished eating when two huge birds appeared in the sky. The sailors were so scared that they ran to the ship and set sail at once. But Sinbad stayed on the island as it was not safe to sail in a storm. The angry birds picked up huge boulders in their claws and dropped them on the ship. The ship was wrecked and only a few sailors managed to swim back safely to the island. Sinbad and the Island of Treasure. Sinbad was sailing through the Indian Ocean when a terrible storm wrecked his ship. He was tossed onto a deserted island, but his entire crew was drowned. Sinbad was very sad, but decided to explore the island. Perhaps someone lives here and can help me. He thought. He spent the whole day walking around the island. There were no people on the island, but Sinbad found a cave full of treasure. There were huge diamonds, rubies, and piles of jewelry. Sinbad decided to build a raft. After many days of hard work, he managed to build a strong raft and secured a few jewels to it. Then he cast off into the ocean. He floated for three whole days until a passing merchant ship rescued him. When Sinbad reached Baghdad, he sold the jewels and became rich. But he could never find the island of treasure again. Sinbad's escape. After traveling around the world for years, Sinbad married a beautiful woman and settled down in her hometown. Sadly, she fell ill after a year and died. One of his friends told him, "My friend, escape while you can. In this land, husbands are buried along with their dead wives." Sinbad immediately started planning how to escape and hid some jewels in his pockets. The next morning, the townspeople. took sinbad and his dead wife to a cave in the nearby mountain the cave was sealed with a huge boulder sinbad immediately tried to find some other way out of the cave he could clearly hear the sound of running water following the water he finally emerged near the sea far away from his wife's town he sold the jewelry he had hidden and bought a ship he said it is safer to face the sea than the strange customs of people
the village of savages. James was an explorer who had traveled across the world. Once he was flying over a forest when the engine of his plane failed and crashed into the trees. As James got out of the fallen plane, he heard the sound of drums. Before long, he reached a village. There was a fire burning in the middle of the village and men and women were circling it, chanting and beating drums. Two men dragged out a young child from a hut. One of them held a sword. They were going to kill the child. James realized that these were savage cannibals. Luckily, he had his gun with him. He immediately fired, scaring the savages. Then he ran in and rescued the child. For two days, they hid in the forest until they were rescued. Most people did not believe James' story, but he knew it was the truth. The Old Man Sven was walking through the fields when he saw an old man sitting near a stream. The old man looked quite weak, so Sven said, May I help you? The old man did not speak, but made a sign to carry him across the stream. Sven helped the old man to clamber onto his back and crossed the stream. But when they reached the other side, the old man tightened his grip around Sven's neck. Let go of me, shouted Sven. But the old man did not let go. He made Sven gather food, cook and do all the work. Sven was trapped. Finally, one day he had an idea. He found some grapes and let them ferment. In a few days, it turned into wine. Then Sven offered the wine to the old man. He had all the wine at once and slept deeply. At last, his hold loosened and Sven was able to escape. The Gigantic Snake Jared and Nate were riding through the scrubland when they heard a strange hissing sound. Their horses seemed uneasy, so the two boys decided to stop and camp for the night. They found an old barn nearby. Then, tired, they went to sleep. Jared was woken up by a strange sound. It sounded like the hissing they had heard earlier, but much louder. He grabbed his gun and slowly crept out of the tent. He stopped in shock. There was an enormous snake just outside the camp. Jared watched in horror as the snake swallowed up one of the horses. Jared shot at the snake, but in the dark, he was not sure if he had killed it. He woke Nate up and they packed up their bags quickly. Taking the remaining horses, they rode away, warning people for miles around of the gigantic snake in the scrubland. The innkeeper, Penny and her brother Derek were trekking across the countryside. They decided to stay at an inn for the night before continuing on their journey. The innkeeper offered them some rice and vegetables, cooked with some strange herbs. Penny was suspicious of the innkeeper, so she decided not to eat the vegetables. She tried to warn her brother, but he did not listen. As soon as they had eaten, Derek felt very sleepy. Penny took him up to the room and pretended to sleep. An hour later, Penny heard the room being unlocked. The innkeeper crept in and walked over to their bags. At once, she stood up and screamed loudly. The neighbors rushed in and caught the innkeeper red-handed. They realized that the innkeeper would drug travelers and then steal from them. When Derek woke the next morning, he was shocked to learn what had happened and what he had slept through. The Adventurer Grant was a farmer who lived in a small village. He would often say, I wish I could find treasure, rescue people and have great adventures. One day, Grant was plowing his field when he heard someone screaming for help. The screams were coming from one of the neighboring houses and he rushed in. Who is it? I will save you, he declared. But when he looked around, he felt very silly. It was just his neighbor Mr. James watching a horror movie on TV. A few days later, Grant was going to the market in his wagon. As he turned around a sharp bend in the road, he saw two robbers attacking a girl. Grant charged forward. He pulled the girl onto the wagon, leaving the robbers standing by the roadside, looking surprised. The girl told the police everything and the robbers were soon caught. Grant was just glad that he had finally found adventure. The Brave Warrior 
the people of a village near Khiva were very afraid. A group of bandits often came to their village and looted them. One day, a brave warrior Ali stopped at their village to eat and rest. That same evening, bandits again attacked the village and the villagers ran away, screaming in fright. Ali was not frightened and attacked the bandits with his bow and arrows. He soon defeated all of them. The villagers thanked Ali and said, O oh, brave Ali, please stay with us and protect us. I cannot stay here, but I will help you, promised Ali. Ali started teaching the villagers how to save themselves from the bandits. He taught them how to use bows and arrows. At the end of each day, he would give a golden arrow to the person who did best. Within a few weeks, the villagers were confident and no longer feared the bandits. Avalanche. A week before Christmas, Gabby was on her way to her grandmother's cabin in the mountains. It had been snowing lightly all week. By the time she reached the foothills, the snow was falling heavily and she had to drive very carefully. Gabby was just half an hour away from her grandmother's house when she heard an ominous rumble. The entire face of the snow-capped mountain above seemed to crumple and shudder. It was an avalanche. As the snow moved faster and faster down the mountain, Gabby knew she had mere moments to save herself. Gabby drove as fast as possible to cross the stretch of road that she knew came right in the path of the avalanche. For a moment, it seemed as if it had not been enough. Surely, she would be buried under the avalanche. But with a final burst of speed, Gabby reached safety. She had never been so relieved in her life. Tom at the circus. Tom enjoyed his job at the circus and all the folk there loved him. Only Theo the clown did not like him at all. One day, Tom was helping with the horses. Evan, the horse trainer, came and started riding the stallion. Almost immediately, the horse reared up and almost threw Evan down. Take off his saddle, Tom, said Evan. At once, they discovered what had made the horse rare. Hidden beneath the saddle were two sharp, prickly burrs. When Evan sat in the saddle, they had pricked the horse, causing him to jump. Evan was furious and said, Who would do such a thing? Theo smiled sneakily and said, Wasn't Tom taking care of the horse? However, Evan just smiled and said, Theo, if Tom did this to the horse, then why do you have a bar sticking to your shirt? Theo went red with embarrassment. He left the circus and was never heard of again. Air attack. It was a dark, cloudy night. Corporal Jackson was tense. His company was supposed to launch an air attack at the enemy, but it was too dark to make sure that they actually landed on the target. The men lined up and jumped out of the plane. One by one, they opened their parachutes and sailed silently to the ground. Instead of landing in an open field as planned, the corporal found himself falling into a thick canopy of trees. His parachute got stuck in the branches and he had to cut himself out of the harness. He fell soundlessly to the ground, alert for any enemy troops. Dodging behind the trees, the corporal rescued three of his men from the enemy before they finally reached an open field. He held his breath as he heard swift footsteps approaching. Then a familiar voice whispered, Corporal, awaiting your orders, sir. Corporal Jackson nodded and silently led the attack. Pirates. Joseph was only 10 years old, but he was smart. He noticed things that most people ignored. That is how he knew something was wrong that night. Joseph's family was spending the holidays on a cruise ship in the Caribbean. Tonight, everyone on the ship was enjoying themselves at dinner, but Joseph was alert. It was at 11 o'clock that Joseph heard soft splashes like a rowboat. Within 5 minutes, he heard a scrambling sound and then a gunshot. Pirates had boarded their cruise ship. He silently slipped into a corner and called the Coast Guard. Then he hid behind some barrels in the pantry and waited. In the meantime, the pirates rounded up all the passengers and started stealing their valuables. It seemed as though they would get away with it. When the Coast Guard arrived at last, 
everyone was relieved when the pirates were arrested and thanked Joseph for saving them all. Buried treasure. Penny had grown up in an orphanage and had no idea who her family was. One day she got a letter and a map that said, "Follow the map to find your family's treasure." Following the directions on the map, Penny found herself in a barren field. She had just begun to dig when a girl who looked just like her came there. The girl was Polly, and she too had received a map that led her there. Together, they started digging, wondering what this mysterious treasure could be. They finally found a large wooden box buried in the soil. When they opened it, they saw photographs, letters, and jewelry. They were sisters. Reading through the letters in the box, they found that their parents had died soon after their birth. but had hidden this box for the girls the girls were delighted but they always wondered who sent them the maps adventure under water two days ago romi's father had gone out in his fishing boat but had not returned so romi decided that he would look for his father himself before his mother could stop him he took his little boat and set sail romi thought Let me throw out my fishing net while I sail. However, suddenly something started pulling the net so hard that Romy lost control of his boat. He found himself thrown out of the boat into a dark hole. He heard a groan of pain from the darkness and crept closer. It was his father. Romy's father told him that they were inside the stomach of a giant fish. Romy had a bag of pepper in his pocket, so he tossed it up the fish's nose. The fish gave a violent sneeze, throwing the Romi and his father out into the sea. Romi's boat was nearby, and soon they sailed away to safety. Kidnapped. One morning, Eric was riding his bicycle when a black car slowed down next to him. Before he could understand anything, two men covered his nose with a chloroform drag, and he fainted. When he woke up, he was locked in a room. He had never seen before. There were no windows and no furniture except for a mattress on the floor. Luckily, the room key was in the door from outside. Eric had an idea. He pushed a sheet of newspaper part way under the door. Using another paper, he pushed at the keyhole till he heard the key fall onto the newspaper. Then he slowly pulled the newspaper back to his side of the door with the key on it. Eric held his breath as he turned the key. and opened the door sneaking out of the house he called the police the kidnappers were caught before they even realized that eric had escaped mountain adventure sam and aiden loved rock climbing they went hiking and climbing one weekend but the weather forecast was not so good it looks like a storm is rolling in warned sam i think we have a few hours protested aiden Finally Sam agreed. After making sure that their ropes were secure, the boys began rappelling down the rock face. Aiden reached the base safely, but Sam was still about midway down the rock. Suddenly, the storm which had held off so far hit them with full force. The ropes became slippery, and Sam's foothold crumbled. He was suspended in the midair, supported only by a single rope. Aiden immediately steadied the rope, and Sam carefully slid down a few feet. Till he saw a safe outcropping of rock to use as a foothold. It was a tense few minutes, but felt like hours. Finally, Sam reached the ground safely, and the boys heaved a sigh of relief. Davy Crockett and the Coonskin. A long time ago in America, raccoon fur or coonskin was quite valuable. This fact turned out to be lucky for Davy Crockett. He decided to run for election. and was campaigning in town one day there was a big crowd gathered when one of the men called out all this talk is fine but i'm thirsty i'll believe that you can govern us if you can get each of us a drink first davy knew that the entire town would see it as a weakness and he would not get any votes if he refused so he led them all to the local bar and ordered a drink for everyone of course the barman asked for money which davy didn't have Instead he got up grabbed a gun and walked into the woods within 10 minutes he came back with a handful of coon skins the barman served the drinks and davy crockett won the elections 
Mary and Kate. Mary had never traveled outside her small town, but all that changed when she met Kate. Kate was much older than Mary. However, since they both traveled in the same bus to work every day, they became good friends. One day, Kate said, "Mary, I'm going to visit my cousin in Scotland. Would you like to come with me?" Mary was thrilled as she had always wanted to visit Scotland, but at the same time she was terrified. Kate let her think about it for a week and then said, "Mary, you should not let your fear rule your life. Take every opportunity as an adventure, and you will always enjoy what you do." If you are always too scared to take a chance, you will always regret missing out on life's experiences. Mary realized that Kate was right. She thanked her for being such a good friend and began packing for the greatest adventure of her life. Enemy attack. David stood on the roof of his house enjoying the setting sun. Suddenly, the quiet was shattered by a sharp siren. David knew it signaled the coming of the enemy planes. Within minutes, David could make out the shapes of the enemy soldiers dropping out of planes, with the parachutes billowing out behind them. He ran down to warn his family, but saw that his family had been taken hostage by an enemy soldier already. The soldier had not seen him, so David picked a heavy brass vase and hit the soldier hard on his head. The family sprang to action. Mother ran around shutting doors and drawing curtains. David's sister shut off all the lights. David's father called up the local police while his uncle tied up the enemy soldier. The family picked up whatever valuables they could lay their hands on, ran out of the house and drove off to safety. Brave Millie. Millie was a friendly girl. She liked visiting the old aunts and uncles who had no family. One of her favorites was Aunt Dinah. She was plump and pretty and loved feeding Millie all kinds of goodies like cakes and lemonade. Today Millie decided to visit Aunt Dinah. She rang the doorbell and waited, but strangely no one answered the door. Millie then tried pushing the door, but it did not budge. Very worried, Millie walked around looking for an open window. Thankfully, the bedroom window was open. Once inside, Millie could hear a groan coming from the bathroom. She pushed open the bathroom door and gasped. Aunt Dinah was lying in a pool of blood, groaning with pain. Millie ran to the phone and called her mother, who called the ambulance. Soon Aunt Dinah was admitted to the hospital. Everyone praised Millie and said that she had saved Aunt Dinah's life. Bear in the camp. Bonnie and Bill were out camping. Bill was lighting the fire so that Bonnie might cook dinner. All of a sudden they heard a noise. Bonnie turned around and froze in her place. She said, "Bill, there is a big brown bear near the trees." By now, the bear was grunting loudly and shuffling closer to their camp. Bill and Bonnie slowly backed away. The bear came closer and closer. Bonnie wondered how to get rid of the bear and had an idea. They were standing next right to their camper, so she asked Bill to get the honeycomb from inside. As soon as the bear smelled the honey, he stopped growling. He followed the aroma of the honey right into the van, and Bonnie and Bill slammed the door shut. They called the rangers and, with their help, released the bear back into the wild. They had never had such an exciting camping trip in their life. Up in the air, this is your captain speaking. Due to an electrical failure in our right engine, we are forced to make an emergency landing. Please remain calm. Jane looked out of her window. On the right side of the plane, a thin plume of smoke rose from the engine. Many people raised their voices in agitation. It was really difficult to stay calm when they were hurtling down towards the earth at a high speed. Without any warning, the right wing burst into flames. This made the plane lose its balance, and instead of a steady glide, it went into a tailspin. The situation was becoming more and more serious. Just when it seemed that they would crash, the pilot managed to gain control long enough to bring the plane to a bumpy touchdown. The emergency exits were opened and they were safe. Jane exclaimed, "I don't think I ever want an exciting travel experience again in my life." Adventure in the market. One evening, Pansy was walking through the market when she heard two men talking. The jewels must reach me by midnight," said the first man. "Don't worry, it will be done. 
said the second man. Pansy peeped around the wall of the shop and saw the two men clearly. The first man was tall and muscular with a scar running from his forehead to chin. The other man was well dressed but mean looking. Pansy was scared and turned to leave but her dress got caught on a nail. The two men came around the side of the shop at that very moment and saw her standing there. Did you hear anything? growled the first man and grabbed Pansy's arm. Pansy screamed out. She screamed so loudly that a large crowd gathered, trapping the two men. Soon the police came and arrested the men. Pansy shuddered and said, "Who knew the market could be so dangerous?" Rip current. Michael was enjoying the day at the beach with his friends. The lifeguards had warned against rip currents, so everyone stayed close to the beach. Michael was playing beach volleyball when he suddenly noticed a flash of red in the water. It was a small girl in a red bathing suit. She had swum too far from the shore. Immediately, Michael jumped into the water. He soon reached the girl, but now he faced another problem. There were very strong rip currents in the ocean. He knew that he would not get very far if he tried to swim against the current. He might even be drowned. So Michael decided to float as far as the current took him. Then, with the little girl securely on his back, he started swimming parallel to the shore. When he felt the RIP current weakening at last, he was relieved. Swimming back to the shore, he was exhausted, but glad to be alive. Hari to the rescue. Hari was very excited. He was on a camping trip with his school friends. The camp was situated right on the river bank. If you stretched your hands, you could touch the freezing water out of the river. It was so beautiful. Some of the children played beach volleyball and some played football, while others just sat dangling their feet in the water. In the evening, there was a campfire. Everybody was soon dancing and singing around the fire. But what was this? Sheena had come too close to the fire and her scarf had caught fire. She carried on dancing and singing, unaware of the danger she was in. Hari acted quickly, pulling off the scarf and pushing her to safety. But his own hands were burnt. The others immediately dipped his hands in the cold water. Hari soon recovered and became the hero of the trip. Quick thinking, Meeta's neighbor was an old man who lived all by himself. The children in the neighborhood did not like him. He always shouts at us for no reason. They said. One day, Meeta was playing near the staircase when she heard strange noises coming from the man's house. She hesitated, but when the noises grew louder, she rushed towards the old man's house. Luckily, the door was open. She ran towards the sound, but then stopped short. The old man was lying on the ground with a live wire next to him. He was shaking violently, as if in the midst of a shock. Meeta immediately ran to the main electricity board. switched it off and threw a blanket over the old man then she ran out calling for help when the man recovered he visited meeta with a beautiful doll and thanked her they became good friends thanks to meeta's bravery and intelligence adventure in a boat monty traveled to school in a boat every day the school was on the other side of the river So he and his friends took the little ferry boat across. Monty's friend Raja was a mischievous boy. Raja, sit still, otherwise the boat will tilt and you will all fall into the water. The boatman would say, but still Raja would not sit still. One day the river was a bit choppy and the boat was being tossed from side to side. Raja bent over the side of the boat and fell into the river. He would definitely have been drowned that day. but for monty's presence of mind monty grabbed onto his leg and did not let go with the help of the other passengers monty was able to pull up a wet and scared raja back into the boat that was the scariest moment of my life said raja thanking monty john smith and the little girl in 1895 john smith was an engineer with the railways he loved this job but was always on the lookout for adventure one day john was in the train to michigan the other engineer bob was steering the train 
while John was checking the oil levels and other machinery. Bob had slowed the train down so that it was safe for John to do this. Just then, John saw a group of small children dart across the railway tracks. All the children ran across safely except for one little girl. She saw the slowly approaching train and froze. John called out to Bob to stop the train, but he knew the girl was too close. Immediately he jumped to the tip of the engine and reached out rescuing the girl in the nick of time. Finally Bob safely stopped the train and John set down the girl safe and sound. The spirit of adventure. Annie spread out the map on the floor of her living room. Her vacations were coming up and she was determined that she would have an adventurous trip. The trouble was she didn't know where to go. Would it be better to go rock climbing or water skiing? Annie was so confused. Finally, Annie took a coin and sat facing away from the map. Closing her eyes, she tossed the coin over her shoulder. Wherever the coin lands, that's where I'll go first, she thought. When she turned around, she was confused. Where was the coin? It had rolled off under a chair. Annie decided to go off the map, just like the coin. That is why she decided to go skydiving. Now she was flying high up in the air, waiting to jump out. It was the most thrilling adventure she had ever experienced, and she promised herself that it would not be the last. Shark attack. Dr. Jonathan Rees was a scientist. He had been studying the plants near coral reefs, and today was his last dive underwater. Jonathan was collecting samples when he accidentally cut his arm on a piece of coral. It was not a deep cut, but still, the water was tinged red with his blood. Before he could swim up to the surface, his worst fears came true. Smelling the blood in the water, a shark came, swimming closer and closer to him. As the shark started circling around him, Jonathan knew he did not have much time. He only had a small knife attached to his wetsuit. He gripped it hard and waited. Within moments, the shark attacked him. Jonathan repeatedly jabbed at the shark's eyes and gills, its weakest spots. As soon as the shark swam away, Jonathan pushed towards the surface of the water. He could hardly believe that he had survived a shark attack. Thin Ice Jason and Ben were spending their winter holidays with their uncle. The boys were very excited as the temperature was below freezing that day. The lake must have frozen uncle, said Ben. Can we go skating on it? Uncle said. Until I make sure the ice is thick enough, you two must not go near the lake. However, later that day, Ben convinced Jason to go to the lake with him. It looked frozen solid. Ben ran out onto the ice without a care. And before he knew it, there was a loud crack. The ice was too thin and Ben fell into the ice water. Jason knew that he had to act fast. He ran back and grabbed a coil of rope. Staying on the land, he threw out the rope and pulled Ben out to safety. Ben was chilled to the bone and fell quite ill, but he had learned his lesson. Mutiny at Sea Captain Turner had an intuition that something bad was about to happen. The last captain of the ship had simply disappeared one stormy night. Turner suspected that he had been killed, but he had no proof. Today again, his intuition warned him to be alert. He hid two sharp blades in his sleeves and watched his crew carefully. Just as he had expected, five of the crew mutinied. They attacked the captain when he was on the wheel and tied him and the other loyal crew. Turner pretended to be unconscious, but as soon as the mutineers were out of the room, he quickly cut through the ropes using his hidden blades. He also freed the rest of his loyal crew. Within minutes, the mutineers had been defeated. Turner handed them to the harbour police. One of the men confessed that they had also killed the last captain and they were all put into jail. Turner was relieved and always trusted his intuition. The Cable Car Money operated the small supply cable car. It was strung out between two mountains with a deep gorge between them. It had been raining for several days now and landslides had already blocked the roads to the other mountain. The cable car was the only remaining link. Today, the villagers from the other side had sent a distress message. Please send medicines. Two children very ill. 
Money ran with the letter to the doctor who gave him the medicines. Money secured the medicines and started the machinery to send the cable car across. But the storm was so strong that midway across it seemed like the cable would snap. Money held his breath, but the cable car safely reached the other end. Just as the villagers took out the medicines, the cable finally snapped and the car hurtled down into the deep gorge. Money was relieved and thanked God that the cables had held up just long enough. The Stolen Goods Sam was playing with his new remote-controlled airplane. Unfortunately, he lost control and the plane fell into the garden next door. This house belonged to a bad-tempered old man in a wheelchair. Sam crawled through a gap in the hedge. He ran into the gardener who said, What are you doing here, boy? While Sam was explaining, the old man came out on his wheelchair, shouting, Who's there? What's happening? Sam ran away in fright. Later that day, he crept back into the garden to retrieve his airplane. As he crawled amongst the bushes, he came across a hole in the ground. The hole looked freshly dug and was covered with twigs and stones. Sam pushed the stones aside and was astonished to find silver glasses and bowls and lots of jewellery. Sam called out to the old man. He came with the police. They soon arrested the gardener who had been stealing from all the houses in the neighbourhood. Looking for treasure Grandpa and Granny lived in an old cottage with a big garden. Mary, Jason and Aaron loved going there as they were given two rooms on the top floor to sleep in. The boys' room was large, while Mary had a small room with a sloping roof and a tiny window. One night, Grandpa told them, One of my uncles hid all the family treasure before going to fight in the war. Unfortunately, he died and none knows where the treasure is. How exciting, said Jason. Let's start hunting for it tomorrow. The next morning, they hunted all over the garden but found nothing. Later, they decided to explore the roof. Look, there's a nest in the chimney, Aaron called. But it looks like it's built on a box. The children carefully took out the box and opened the bolt. They had finally found the lost treasure. Attack of the Grizzly Bear Bonnie Travis lived in a cabin near the woods. She had grown up in the city but listened carefully when her neighbours shared their experiences of living close to nature. One night, it was quite late when Molly thought she heard a sound outside. She opened the door and walked out on the path that led to the woods. Then she stopped in horror because right in front of her was a huge grizzly bear. The bear ran after her and when she struggled, its grip only tightened. Poor Molly was sure she would never escape. Then she remembered her neighbor's advice and went limp. Thinking the woman was dead, the bear let her go. She did not stir for several minutes. Finally, when she was sure the bear had gone, Molly called out for help. She had many cuts and bruises, but her quick thinking had saved her life. Benny and the Squirrels Benny was a gardener's daughter. She was six years old but had not started going to school because her father could not afford the fee. Benny spent her days in the garden. She loved the squirrels and would bring often some food for them. One day, Benny saw a coin shining in the grass. She took it to her father. He asked in excitement, Where did you find this? When Benny took her father there, she saw another coin. Soon, they found another and then another coin. Following the trail of coins, they came to the hole where the squirrels lived. The squirrels had a pot of coins. Benny's father said, These are gold coins and look quite old. So he took the coins to the museum. They really were ancient coins. So the museum gave Benny's father a reward. Benny could go to school thanks to the squirrels. The Crash Paul was driving home from work. The weather was stormy and it was raining very heavily. Paul was driving along the river bank, hoping to take a shortcut and reach home early. This road had many sharp curves. He was not able to see the curves clearly and slid off the road. He crashed through the guardrail and landed straight into the river. Paul could not believe what was happening, but he soon got over his shock and realized the danger he was in. If the car went underwater, he knew he would never be able to escape. Right now, his car was bobbing above the water, slowly sinking. Paul knew 
He had only seconds to escape. He smashed his window and tried to get out of the car by holding on to the roof. Soon he fell into the water. With great difficulty, he swam to the river bank and caught his breath. If he had delayed even a moment, he would never have managed to survive. Encounter with a snow leopard. Stella and Dan loved to explore different places. Stella wanted to visit a glacier, so they hired a car and set off. As they drove higher and higher up the mountains, the sky became dark with clouds. The snow was light at first, but soon came down so thick and fast that it was hard to see anything. The road was now covered with a thick layer of snow. It was too dark and slippery to drive on, so all the cars stopped in a line, waiting for the snowfall to stop. Suddenly, there was a loud howling noise. Before they knew what had happened, a large snow leopard leapt onto the hood of Stella and Dan's car. Startled, Dan accidentally switched on the headlights of the car and windshield wipers. The snow leopard looked startled. With another loud roar, he leapt off and ran into the gathering snow. Stella and Dan could not believe what had just happened. Peril on the mountain. Macy and her friends were on a school trip to Ladakh. Macy thought, "The trip has been fun, but nothing exciting ever happens to us." That day, they were driving up to one of the high mountain passes. The girls were thrilled to see the powdery snow piled high on both sides of the narrow path. The road had been cleared, but small patches of ice remained. Suddenly, on a very steep part of the path, their bus started skidding sideways. Macy almost screamed when she looked out of the window. Another inch, and the bus would have hurtled down into the ravine far below. Luckily, the driver managed to stop just in time. With the help of other motorists, the bus driver covered the icy path with mud. Now, at last, the bus was able to move ahead safely. But Macy could not stop shaking with fear. I will never wish for excitement again, she thought. Just in time, Kit and Alec were visiting their grandparents at their farm. Grandpa often told them, "Be careful in the tall grass. Snakes live there." and you may not see them in time one sunny day they were playing cricket when the ball rolled into the tall grass alec was hunting for the ball when he heard a rustling sound it was a huge snake alec shouted out look it a snake while talking alec had stepped too near the snake and in reaction the snake bit him on the ankle kit screamed in fear and the snake slithered away kit immediately called out to her grandfather they tied a handkerchief tightly around alec's leg and rushed him to the hospital the doctor quickly gave alec an injection and slowly he started recovering the doctor said you were brought here just in time alec thanked grandpa and kit for saving his life how to catch a thief manu was alone at home his parents had gone to visit some relatives but he had stayed home because he had exams the next day Manu switched off all the lights and secured the doors and the windows. He then went into his room to study. Just an hour later, he heard a noise. A thief was trying to enter the house. Manu quickly called the police, turned off his lights and hid under the table. Soon, the thief crept into his room. The moonlight glinted on the blade of a knife, and Manu shuddered in fear. He hid under his table. As soon as the thief had his back towards the table, Manu got out from the table. Then he hit the thief with one of his heavy books. The thief's knife fell off his hand, and he lay. The policeman arrived soon after and said, "You are the first person to catch a thief using your books." The caves. Sita and Ritu were very excited. This year, their family was going on holiday to the seaside. The girls spent many hours in the beach. It was hot. So they walked towards the shelter of some nearby rocks. There they found several shallow caves. Then they came to a cave that was larger and deeper than the others. It was too dark to see much, so they decided to come back with torches the next day. But when they made their way outside, they got a shock. While they had been exploring the cave, the tide had risen. They would be trapped here for hours. Sita had a small mirror in her pocket. She used it to reflect sunlight towards the shore, hoping that someone would see it. 
A while later, a lifeguard saw the flashes of light and immediately brought out a motorboat to rescue them. The girls promised to be careful about the turning tides. Adventure on the night bus Mark was travelling by the night bus. It set off on time and two hours later they stopped so that the passengers might stretch their legs. But before they could step out of the bus, a shot rang out. Three gunmen had surrounded the bus. Give us all your valuables, they shouted. Mark quickly hid between two seats where he could not be seen. Two thieves stood near the driver's door. Mark whispered his plan to the passenger nearest to him who passed on the message to the others. At a signal, the passengers near the driver's door threw their bags at the thieves. The thieves had not expected this and were easily overpowered by the passengers. The driver immediately contacted the local police who took the thieves away. Everyone praised Mark's quick thinking and courage. Hijacked Flight 356 was half an hour away from Kathmandu. A man wearing a hooded sweatshirt got up, looked around stealthily and walked towards the front of the aircraft. Within moments, he turned around, holding up a revolver in one hand. He barged into the cockpit and forced the pilots to change their direction. The plane was being hijacked. At the same time, another man at the back of the aircraft got up. He too had a gun and shouted, If anyone moves, he will be killed. Serena quickly grabbed her bag from near her feet and took out a can of pepper spray. As soon as the hijacker was near her, she sprayed right into his eyes. Immediately, the other passengers tied him up. Hearing the commotion, the first hijacker came back from the cockpit. This time, the people were prepared. They jumped on him and tied him up, while the pilot once more flew the plane back on the course. Mike's Accident It was a dark, rainy day. Mike was driving home from work. He thought, maybe I should stop my car till the storm passes. I can hardly see a thing. So he slowed down his car, hoping to reach a safe turn off point soon. He almost didn't see the sharp bend in the road. Even though he applied the brakes, yet the car started to skid. At the same moment, another car came hurtling down the road from the other side. On the slippery road, it was impossible to control the cars. In a split second, Mike realized that applying the brakes was the wrong thing to do as it made the car skid more. Instead, he let the car slow down on its own, steering it as best as he could. There was a crash, but luckily for them both, Mike's intelligent driving had prevented a bad accident. Both the drivers were safe and the cars were only scratched. Fire from Ice Sammy and his elder brother Tony went ice fishing. When they reached the frozen river, Tony found a good spot and cut a round hole to fish through. After a while, there was a sharp tug on the line. They had caught a fish. Unfortunately, Sammy was so excited that he fell right into the hole. Tony immediately pulled him out, but he knew that he could fall very ill if he did not warm Sammy up at once. The problem was that they had no matches to start a fire with. Then Tony had an idea. He broke off a thick piece of ice and shaved it in the form of a lens. He then collected some twigs and branches. Using the ice lens, he focused the sun rays so that the twigs might catch fire. Thus, he lit a roaring bonfire which warmed Sammy up. Sammy could not believe that Tony had really created fire out of ice. Escape from the Kidnappers Pareha was walking to the market when two men dashed out of a dark alleyway and grabbed her. They wore masks and had guns. As she opened her mouth to scream for help, they hit her on the head and she fainted. When Pareha woke up, she was in a dark, abandoned warehouse. Her arms and legs were tied on a chair with strong ropes. She listened carefully and heard her kidnappers call her parents for ransom. When she was sure they were not around, Fariha grabbed the long end of a loose rope in her teeth and pulled it tight. Then she lifted her hands up and brought them down quickly, pulling apart as hard as possible. As she had hoped, the rope broke at its weak point, the lock. She quickly freed her legs and carefully slipped out of the warehouse. She hurried to the police station and told them everything. The kidnappers were soon caught and punished. 
lost in the mine. Mason was an old man who had worked in the mines all his life. In fact, the other miners often said, "It is not a mine till old Mason has been in it." One evening, Mason had just finished eating his supper when his phone rang. "Mr. Mason, we need your help." A young boy had wandered into the mines the night before and hadn't come out. Mason quickly entered the mines and started tracking the route the child had taken. He found a toffee wrapper, then a handkerchief. However, the trail suddenly seemed to disappear. Mason saw that the wall of the mine had caved in, blocking his path. He carefully removed boulders from the top, creating a hole big enough to squeeze through. The boy was at the other side and quickly scrambled through the hole. He thanked Mason again and again and promised never to wander into mines alone. Lightning. Abe was walking through the fields on his way home one evening. He could hear the low rumble of thunder in the distance and looked up to see a flash of lightning. Phew, that lightning seemed really close. He thought he knew that it would be safest for him to take shelter. but the only shelter was a tall tree about 20 feet to his left before he could move towards it a flash of lightning struck the tree slicing it in half abe knew that the lightning could strike him at any moment he could feel his hair stand on end he immediately crouched down low balanced on his toes and covered his ears this time the lightning struck right at his feet but though his feet felt tingly he was safe he quickly ran across the field to the safety of his house never had he thought that he would survive being struck by lightning shipwreck roma was in a cruise ship when there was a storm and the ship began to sink roma grabbed her backpack and rushed to the deck however a huge wave crashed into the ship and capsized the lifeboats she quickly took out the inflatable rubber dinghy She saw a man's body bobbing in the water. She managed to pull him out of the water and was relieved that he was still breathing. Roma noticed that he had many cuts and bruises which needed to be cleaned. She filled a paper bag from her backpack with water. She then lit one of the candles from the emergency pack of the dinghy and placed the paper bag over the flame. Instead of burning, the paper bag transferred all the heat to the water. Within minutes, the water was boiling. She cleaned the man's wounds and the next morning they were rescued by the coast guard. The man was much better and thanked Roma for saving his life. The message the second world war had just broken out between France and Germany. Estelle worked as a nurse in a small hospital in France. One night a general was carried into the hospital. He was barely conscious. But he grabbed Estelle's hand and said, "Help me deliver this message to Colonel Ripton at Lyons. You must not fail." The general died soon after. Estelle did not know how to send the message safely. Then she had an idea. She ran into the storeroom of the hospital and took a bar of soap. She dug out a bit of the soap, placed the message inside, and sealed the soap shut. The next day, she prepared a box of documents, clothes, and the soap. and set out to meet the colonel at Lyons even though the package was checked at numerous checkpoints no one ever found the hidden message until it reached the colonel tornado it was a hot summer afternoon the sky had turned green and diana could see the low dark clouds she immediately switched on the weather channel on the radio residents are warned to stay indoors The tornado is expected to hit the city within the next half an hour. The latest reports are coming in. Dinah was still at least 20 minutes away from home. Already she could see the swirling tornado in the distance. She quickly drove off the road and parked her car. Then she ran towards a nearby ditch and threw herself into it. She covered her head with her coat and waited. Within 10 minutes the tornado hit, but Dinah was safe in the ditch. When it had passed at last, Dinah looked up to see destruction all around. Trees, cars, and fences had all been tossed about. She thanked God that she knew how to stay safe in a tornado. The stolen jewels. There had been a daring robbery at the largest jewelry store in town. However, Inspector Singh was sure 
The thief had not escaped from the neighborhood yet. Where would he have hidden? He thought. There was an apartment building right behind the jewelry store. It would be easy to jump from the shop roof to the second floor apartment balconies. With a small group of officers, Inspector Singh made his way to the apartments. The third apartment on the second floor was supposed to be empty, but they could clearly hear the sounds of someone moving around inside. At Inspector Singh's signal, four policemen charged and broke down the door of the apartment. The thief tried to jump out of the balcony, but the policemen were too quick for him. They arrested him and found all the stolen jewels hidden in his bag. Inspector Singh had solved the case. Lost Pinky was visiting her aunt in Rani Khet. One day, while walking in the forest, Pinky saw leopard's fresh prints in the soil. In a panic, she turned and ran. But night was falling, and in the gathering darkness, she stumbled and fell. She could hear a stealthy crunch of footsteps and a low growl. Surely, some wild animal was approaching. Pinky quickly went through her pockets. She just had matches, coins, and a handkerchief. Thankfully, there were plenty of pine trees around. She made a cut in the trunk of a pine tree so that raisin might ooze out. In this, she rolled the handkerchief. She found a green branch and wrapped her handkerchief around one end. Then, using the matches, she lit the pine torch. At least, the light would scare away wild animals. Pinky could now hear the rushing sound of the brook that passed her aunt's house. She followed it home still trembling with fear and excitement. Adventure in the Amazon Victor Smith was one of the most famous wildlife scientists. He had spent several years in the forest around the Amazon. His latest expedition sought to study the population of dolphins in River Amazon. Therefore, he and his team had made camp near the river bank. One morning, the quiet of the forest was shattered by human scream. The members of Smith's expedition rushed out of their tents. They gasped in horror at the sight in front of them. One of the young interns, Michael, was dangling upside down from a nearby tree. A long green boa constrictor was wrapped around his leg and had dragged him up the tree. It could crush him within seconds. At once, Smith grabbed his rifle and took a careful aim. Bang! The shot rang out and everyone held his breath. Then slowly, Michael dropped down to the ground. The boa constrictor was killed. The Vikings Many centuries ago, from the misty north came the Vikings. People in the little fishing village had heard the stories of attacks on other villages along the coast and were scared. One morning, a fisherman saw shapes emerging from the mist. It was a fleet of Viking ships. He quickly roused the other villagers. Within an hour, Five huge Viking ships docked at the harbour. Ten minutes later, a horde of huge warriors with axes and swords trooped towards the village to plunder it. How could a handful of poor fishermen protect the village? When the Vikings were about ten feet away from the village, a huge fishing net fell on top of four attackers. The Vikings could not move or cut the net, as when they tried to stand, they fell on each other. The four Vikings were stabbed by the fishermen like fish in a net. Impressed by their bravery and intelligence, the Vikings agreed never to attack the village. Chain Snatchers Meena was walking home from the bus stop when she heard the sudden roar of a motorcycle. She was instantly cautious. There had recently been a spate of chain snatching and robberies by motorcyclists. They would just speed past and grab the ornaments from pedestrians. As the noise of the engine came closer, Meena clutched hard onto the single gold chain she was wearing around her neck. A moment later, an arm flashed out and grabbed the chain. But before he could speed off, Meena grabbed hold of his arm. As the chain snatcher revved his bike to speed away, Meena pulled on his arm with all her strength. Surprised, the thief was caught off balance and fell off the bike sideways as it skidded onto the sidewalk. The onlookers were stunned for a moment but then rushed forward to help. The police came soon after and took the thief away. Everyone praised Meena for her bravery and quick thinking. Plane Crash in Tenerife A 747 jet was ready for a takeoff at Tenerife. 
when the pilot saw another jet coming into land but surely air control would have told him to change his course with every second the planes came closer still there was no directive from the air control tower 5 seconds later it was already too late neither plane could be stopped now the pilot of the 747 continued to taxi instead of taking off for a moment it seemed as if the planes would miss each other then with a sickening crunch the landing craft ripped off the top of the 747 before landing on its left wing fortunately the occupants who were unharmed ran out quickly meanwhile the 747's pilot fought to control his aircraft slowing down to a stop a moment after the passengers and crew had to run to safety the crushed 747 burst into flames as well the survivors were in shock but thanked the pilot whose skill and determination had saved their lives theft at the supermarket ben was the cashier at the supermarket one day he noticed a suspicious looking man in the checkout line who kept looking around furtively when it was his turn to play the man grabbed his grocery bag punched ben and ran ben was dazed for a moment then he quickly ran out after the shoplifter The man was just driving off in his car when Ben reached him. Ben lunged at the open window of the car, pulled himself in the car and tried to stop the man, but the man just kept driving wildly, swinging this way and that until he drove straight towards the concrete barrier. Ben had just moments to react. He pushed open the car door and rolled out of the car. The next moment, the thief crashed the car. The thief was injured, so the police took him away at once. Luckily, Ben was unhurt. His boss thanked him and rewarded him handsomely. Alligator. Jason and his sister Beth were on an adventure trip across the USA. They had many great experiences, but the scariest was in Mississippi. It was a hot day and they were near a bathing hole at Black Creek. Beth was just about to enter the water when Jason called out, "Stop! Stay back!" There was an alligator approaching. Jason quickly stripped off his shirt and tossed it onto the alligator's eyes, blinding it. He then leapt onto its back, holding tight to its jaws and legs. Beth helped him by throwing twigs and stones from the shore. The animal tried to throw Jason off, but with its legs pinned down, he could not move. Then Jason quickly jumped off the alligator's back and swam quickly to the shore. They ran back to their car before it could even think of coming to the land. The fall. Gary and Ray loved to hike together. Once they were walking over the moors miles away from any village or town, when Ray tripped and fell awkwardly, pain shot through his legs and he fainted. Gary immediately saw that Ray's leg was twisted in a very strange way. He was sure the bone had broken. Gary could not leave Ray here, and he could not move him like this. Finally, he decided to make a splint and hope for the best. He quickly found two sticks of the same length. Carefully straightening the injured leg, he bound the sticks to it using some twine and rope he was carrying. Luckily by then, Ray regained consciousness. Leaning heavily on Gary's shoulders, Ray managed to walk. Thunder rolled overhead and rain poured down on them, making their walk even more difficult. After about 20 minutes, exhausted and drenched, they reached a farmhouse. Finally, they were able to call a doctor. Torch fight back. Nina worked at the local radio station and often had to work late night. There were many cases of robbery being reported, so she joined self defense class. One night, Nina was on her way home after work. She had almost reached her parked car when she heard footsteps behind her. As always, Nina had a powerful torch in her pocket. She turned slowly, gripping it tight. "Give me all your money," demanded a gruff voice. Nina pretended to be scared and said, "Please don't hurt me." The thief relaxed, seeing her fear, and at that moment Nina acted. She turned the powerful beam of her torch on straight at the thief's face. He was blinded by the light. In that moment, Nina punched him hard, breaking his nose. Howling in pain, the thief was still writhing on the ground when the police arrived. Nina said, "I knew the self-defense classes would be useful." Break. 
Sheila was driving to work one day when a truck suddenly cut into her path. To avoid collision, she quickly applied the brakes, but her car did not slow down. Her brakes had failed. Quickly, Sheila maneuvered her car and narrowly avoided hitting the truck. She tried to slow the car by lowering the gears, but still the car rolled on. Then she had the idea of switching off the ignition entirely. Surely that would make the car stop. Unfortunately, the road was on an incline and her car picked up speed as it rolled downhill. Her heart was in her mouth as she saw some school children crossing the road just meters ahead. Sheila swerved to avoid hitting them, driving right onto the grassy bank of the road and into a tree. She had never been so relieved to hit a tree in her life. The Bubblegum Hero Jim loved to pop bubblegum but his habit often annoyed his mother. You chew gum like a cow chews cut Jim, she always complained. Then one day a thief entered their house. He had a gun and warned the family not to move or utter a sound. Everyone was scared and stayed where they were. But where was Jim? He hid as soon as he saw the thief. Now he quietly called the police. While he waited for them to arrive, he had an idea. His younger brother had a toy cruiser with a police siren. Jim quickly switched it on. The thief was startled and ran to peep out of the window. When he turned, Jim blew a gigantic bubble and popped it loud as a gunshot. The thief nearly jumped out of his skin. Just then, the real police arrived and arrested him. Everyone thanked Jim and called him the bubblegum hero. Eclipse Nick was travelling through the African rainforest when he was caught by a tribe. They tied him up and started dancing around a bonfire. It seemed like they were preparing for a sacrifice of some sort. As they danced, they would look at the moon, then come up to Nick and smear him with some colour. Then he finally understood he was a sacrifice to the moon goddess. Nick tried to strain against the rope around his arms and legs, but it was tied securely. Four hefty men carried him to chop his head. They were just about to kill him when there was a loud cry and the people started pointing towards the sky. A dark shadow was moving across the face of the moon. It was an eclipse. Fortunately for Nick, the tribals thought this was the moon goddess's way of saying that she did not want the sacrifice. Now he was safe. A Snow Rescue Chen trudged through the snow with no idea of where he was going. He had lost all sense of time. But it could not have been more than a day since the crash. Chen remembered flying over the mountains. His next memory was waking among the debris of the aircraft. He had searched but found no one else alive. He knew that he would freeze to death if he stayed there. So he started walking. Now Chen could barely feel his toes anymore and his eyes hurt from the bright glare of the snow. Suddenly, he stood up straight. He could hear sounds of chanting in the snow wasteland. Surely, a monastery was close by. With that happy thought, Chen cried for help and fainted. Luckily for Chen, the monks had seen him and were already on their way to rescue him. When he woke up, he was warm and safe. He could not believe his ordeal was over. The Ferris Wheel Lucy loved visiting the carnival. This year, she had convinced her cousin Stephen to go to the carnival with her. They had a great time on the rides. Finally, only the ferris wheel was left. Lucy and Stephen were in the ferris wheel when they heard a terrified cry. A girl in the box before them had somehow slipped past the safety rail and was dangling perilously from the rail high up in the air. Stephen immediately swung into action. He nimbly climbed up the sturdy frame and reached level with the girl who was hanging on for dear life. He carefully inched along the road till he reached the carriage. He grasped her hands firmly and pulled her back into the carriage. The ferris wheel owner immediately started the machinery, bringing them back down to the ground level. Everyone praised Stephen and Lucy said, I am really glad we both came to the carnival today. Watch the way. Monsoon is the best time in Mumbai, Shabana thought. She was riding the double-decker bus, sitting upstairs, of course. She loved the front seat the most, where the rainwater from the window in the front splashed her face. Lost in her thoughts, Shabana missed her bus stop. 
when she tried to get down the bus was so crowded that she had to fight her way all the way down she managed to get down two stops after her own the downpour was persistent the water up to her knees and visibility very poor shabana could not get another bus and had to walk through it all gosh it was difficult shabana somehow managed to reach home mother was standing at the door looking very worried where were you she asked Shabana as she helped her daughter get into drier clothes as Shabana recounted her adventures she smiled thinking monsoon is the best time in mumbai a brave act marissa was traveling in india with a friend they had just reached a famous temple situated on the mountains as the students of history they were interested in studying the temple and knowing more about it the temple was beautiful They walked inside and were admiring the beautiful work of architecture when they heard a loud clap. It shook the entire temple. Suddenly, there was water everywhere. A cloud had burst over the temple, flooding the entire area. Marissa did not know swimming very well, but she was worried about her friend and the priest of the temple. Braving the floating debris coming her way, she found them both and dragged them to a house built on a high mountain. The house was empty, but they were safe. So they waited there as the flood covered the land below them slowly. Finally, 3 days later, a helicopter was sent up to rescue them and they reached home soon after. Watch out for that tree. Spike was spending his vacation at his aunt May's house. One day, Spike and his cousin Terry picked their cycles up and drove to the market to buy eggs and bread for breakfast. Aunt had given Spike a small bag for the eggs, which he hung at the back of the cycle. Terry rode behind Spike, giving directions: "Turn left." "No, I mean turn right." "Turn right." Poor Terry, she was always confused between right and left. On their way back, Terry said, "Turn left," when she really meant right. So Spike turned left and right into somebody's garden. The lady of the house saw him turn in and came running out. Spike became scared. and banged into a tree the cycle fell on top of him and so did the eggs when terry came running into the garden she saw poor spike looking dazed with egg yolks running down his face oh how they all laughed at spike's adventures over breakfast crocodile scare nessa and the family were boating in the river in a coracle which is a small and circular boat Nessa's younger brother Simon was dangling his hand in the water. His mother pulled him back, saying, "Don't do that, Simon. The river is full of crocodiles." Simon angrily moved away from his mother. This movement caused the boat to rock and suddenly there was a big splash. Simon's mother shouted, "Where is Simon?" "Oh no, he has fallen into the water." His father said, "Simon, here. Take my hand." Suddenly mother saw a dark body moving towards the boat. A crocodile is coming. Hurry Simon, worried and scared, Simon slipped under the boat. Nessa dived in, caught him and swam up. Just as they were pulled back into the boat, the dark shadow reached their boat. Everyone gasped with relief. It is just a giant log. However, Simon had learned his lesson. A sleepy afternoon. It is so hot. I wish I could sleep. Thought Michael as he struggled to complete his homework. But if I sleep now, I will have to do these math sums later. Michael shifted his books closer to the window to allow the gentle breeze to enter his room. As he moved, his gaze fell on the house right across the narrow street. That's funny. The Smiths are not in town, so why can I see faint shadows moving across their window? Michael wondered loudly. Silently and carefully he walked across and peered in. A thief was busy stealing from the smith's cupboard. Michael bolted the front door, which the thief had opened and started screaming, "There is a thief here!" Soon everybody in the neighborhood was up. Somebody called the police and the thief was arrested. The thief revealed that he had thought everybody would be asleep in the afternoon. Thanks to Michael's math homework, he was caught. Trouble in the air. Ellen was excited. Today was her first flight as Captain Ellen. 
the four stripes on her sleeve shone as she entered the cockpit and took her seat behind the main controls. She smiled at Ben, the other pilot. They waited for clearance from ground control for a takeoff and were soon in the air. Everything seemed to be in order, but Ellen could not shake off a nasty feeling. I have a bad feeling, she said as Ben got up to drink water. Suddenly the plane shook violently. They had run into rough weather. As Ellen changed the altitude of the plane in search of smoother conditions, the passengers sprayed for their safety. Walking smartly, Ellen soon had the plane under control. Once the plane stopped shaking, the passenger clapped and congratulated Ellen on her flying. Never had Ellen felt happier than this in her life. An apple a day. Angela was bored. Her father had taken them all on a hectic tour of Rome, showing them the Colosseum, Trevi Fountain, Pantheon, and Angela was tired. She did not care much for old buildings or their history. She wanted to do something exciting and eat an authentic pizza. All of a sudden, Angela noticed a man push a lady and snatch a bag from her. The man had stolen the poor lady's bag. Angela realized. She ran after the robber. Taking out the apple in her pocket, she hurled it at his head. The robber stumbled and crashed on the pavement. Before he realized what was happening, Angela had picked up the fallen bag. Angela returned the bag to the lady. The lady smiled and said, Thank you, my dear. Please come for dinner to my place with your family. Angela got her wish after all, an adventure and great food. Caught in the hailstorm Alex and his schoolmates were on a trekking trip to the mountains. On the first day, the excited children had their breakfast and left for their trek with Sam, the camp organizer. It was a clear and beautiful day. But slowly, clouds started rolling in. Sam looked worried. Suddenly, they all heard a loud clap of thunder and saw lightning in the sky. Sam and the children turned back towards the camp. However, they were caught in a hailstorm. Visibility was so poor that Alex and five of his friends were separated from the main group. Lost in the mountains, some of the children started crying. Alex was scared too, but was not ready to give up. He found a small cave and took all his friends there. When it stopped raining, they started walking. Just then, they met Sam, who was looking for them. Overjoyed, they all hugged Sam. Meow Sienna did not like her neighbor's cat Tom. She found him very rude. Every time Tom saw Sienna, he would hiss at her and walk away with his tail high in the air. What is wrong with the cat? Sienna wondered. One day, Sienna went out cycling. In her excitement, she cycled away from her street. As it became darker, she realized she was lost. She first turned left, then right. But she just couldn't find her house or her street. Alone and scared, she started crying. Suddenly, Sienna heard a cat's meow. It was Tom. He came to her and rubbed against her leg, which comforted Sienna. Then Tom started doing something very strange. He would meow at Sienna and then walk a few steps. This went on for some time, till a confused Sienna understood that Tom wanted her to follow him. So, she followed him and he led her right up to her front door. Sienna and Tom became best friends since then. Under the table, Bob and his family lived in an apartment on the seventh floor. Every evening, the family would sit down after dinner and watch the news together. Bob's grandfather called it the family hour. One day, during the family hour, Chelsea noticed that the fan was swaying strangely. Before she could say anything, her grandmother screamed, It is an earthquake. Quick, let us take the stairs and go out in the open. But Bob knew that being on the seventh floor, they would never reach the ground in time. I have a better idea, he said. We should hide under our big table. Not knowing what else to do, the entire family huddled under the table. A little later, the earth stopped shaking. As they came out from under the table, the family noticed that the table had saved them from the fan, which had crashed right on top of it. Chelsea reported that the staircase of the building had fallen in. Everybody thanked Bob for his quick thinking. Mother, the gymnast Once, Claire and her mother went to a wedding. Claire's father was unwell, so he stayed at home. When they reached home, 
Mother rang the bell, but nobody came to open the door. Claire said, Papa is at home, so why is he not opening the door? He must have taken his medicine and gone to sleep. Mother said, What will we do now? Claire looked worried. Mother noticed that the bedroom window was open. She took off her shoes and put down her bag. Asking Claire to wait, she soon climbed up a tree that was right outside the open window. Then she pulled herself effortlessly up the tree, walked across the branch and jumped into the open window. Soon Papa was up and Claire was brought inside the house. I was a gymnast in school. Mother laughed, explaining to her astonished family how she could climb and jump so well. Minnie saves the day. Minnie and Susie were enjoying themselves, splashing in the sea, building sand castles and drinking cold sweet lemonade. Just then, a man came running across the beach and bumped into Susie. Instead of apologizing, he scowled at her. Get out of my way, girl. Before Susie could react, Minnie caught her hand and told her to be quiet. She said later, I recognize the man. He is a wanted thief. I saw his photo in the newspaper. Swiftly and quietly, they followed the man, who entered a small restaurant. There he met another man with a thick beard. The thief handed him a small packet. Luckily, they both did not notice the girls. Minnie immediately called the police. They arrived soon and caught the thief and his friend. Inside the packet was a diamond that the thief had stolen from a wealthy man. Thanks to an alert and informed Minnie, the thief was caught. The Jump Anna and her younger brother were returning home from school. They were excited as they knew their mother was cooking spaghetti with meatballs for lunch. They were still a block away from home when Anna noticed thick black smoke coming from a building to her right. Soon, fire engines arrived, bringing many firefighters. The brave firefighters fought to bring the fire under control. While the firefighters were working on the left side of the building where the fire was most severe, Anna saw a little child standing at a window on the right. Anna at once called a firefighter from the crowd and made him stand under the window. Then she looked up at the child and shouted, Jump! As the petrified child jumped, the firefighter caught him in his arms. All the spectators and the firefighters praised Anna for acting so fast. Leopard Attack Lucy and her brother Tom had taken their goats to graze at a pasture that was close to the forest. In the afternoon, Lucy was sitting on a rock when she suddenly heard Tom scream. Standing in front of him was a leopard. The leopard himself, still a baby, looked scared. As Tom screamed again and fell down in panic, the leopard leapt and caught his foot. Lucy acted swiftly. She picked two sticks up and banging them together, she created a lot of noise. Shouting, she ran towards the leopard. The frightened animal let go of Tom and ran back. Once the story of the attack spread, the forest guards reached Lucy's house. With her help, they tracked the leopard. They took him further into the forest and away from the village so that he might not attack anyone anymore. Lucy had saved not only Tom but also the life of the baby leopard. A Deadly Spice Mix Ten-year-old Rhea was unable to sleep. She was worried about her exam the next day. As she tossed and turned in bed, she heard something crash in her parents' bedroom. Startled, she tiptoed to their bedroom. From a small crack in the doorway, she saw two men tie a father to the chair. Give us the keys to your safe. One of the men was saying. Rhea was scared, but she could not watch her father in pain. Moving quietly, she went to the kitchen and picked up two jars containing chili powder and turmeric. She hurriedly mixed them both and rushed into her parents' bedroom. Catching the thieves unaware, she threw the spice mix into their eyes. The men screamed out in pain. Using the opportunity, Rhea untied her father and they tied the thieves to the chairs. Soon the police arrived and took them to jail. Pirate's Treasure Jimmy was going through a library book when he found a crumpled old map hidden in it. The map showed a peculiar shaped rock with three palm trees next to it. The letter X was drawn under the trees. Jimmy quickly found an atlas. In a local coastal map, he saw the same peculiar rock shape. It was a cliff just a mile away. The very next day, Jimmy and his sister Sally went to the cliff. However, once they reached there, they wondered what to do next. 
After all, there were so many palm trees everywhere. Jimmy was about to give up when Sally called out, "Look, those three trees seem to be taller than the others." At once, they ran there and started digging. 15 minutes later, they found a large metal box. Inside were rusted swords, old-fashioned pistols, jewels, and coins. The sword had an inscription, "Captain Blackbeard." The treasure belonged to a famous pirate. The mysterious Mr. Jones. No one knew who Mr. Jones was. He had arrived in Switzerland a week ago, but stayed inside his room all day. He walked out early one morning. Returning a few minutes later, he saw that a man was trying to enter his room. However, as soon as he saw Mr. Jones, the man hurried away. Mr. Jones decided to set a trap and went out again that evening. He loudly spoke as he passed through the hotel lobby. I will be out for several hours. Then he sneaked back through the window. 10 minutes later, someone opened his door and tiptoed over to the desk. Quick as a flash, he grabbed the intruder. The thief tried to escape, but Mr. Jones knocked him down. Soon the police came there. I am an inspector of Interpol, revealed Mr. Jones. This is an international spy. He was searching for certain secret papers and I caught him in the act. Paragliding. Romy had always wanted to go paragliding. The moment his family reached the hills, Romy wanted to rush out and paraglide. His mother warned him, "It looks like a storm is brewing. Why don't you wait till tomorrow?" But Romy was adamant. He reached the paragliding point and saw that the owner was packing up for the day. It's rough weather, the owner explained. It isn't safe except for expert paragliders. Romy did not want to wait, so he lied. "I am an expert." Soon Romy was launched off the mountain side. However, the winds were really strong and he was blown off course. With great difficulty, he landed in a remote part of the mountain. Then he had to track all the way back, holding the heavy gliding equipment. When Romy returned, he was scratched and his clothes were torn. He promised never to do anything so dangerous. Missing. Emily was missing. No one had heard from her for over a week. Her neighbor Susan said, "Well, she set out in her car early on Saturday morning. She said she was driving to visit her brother Ben." But Ben had not heard from Emily at all. Where could she be? Ben decided to follow the route she would have taken to reach his house. Just an hour later, he saw tire tracks. A car had skidded off the road. Could it be Emily? Sure enough, he soon located Emily's car. It was completely wrecked. Just then, Ben saw a young boy walking towards a nearby cottage. "Do you know anything about this accident?" he asked the boy. The boy replied, "Oh yes, it happened a week ago. There was a lady in the car." but she doesn't know who she is ben was very excited and followed the boy back to the cottage there was emily the hold up it was almost time to close when two men entered his diner they both wore caps while mufflers did half their faces instead of sitting at one of the tables they walked right up to the counter one of the men pulled out a pistol and pointed it at phil give us all the money you have He demanded. Phil immediately opened the cash box and started pulling out the cash. Unnoticed by them, Sally the waitress quietly slipped into the kitchen and called the police. However, she accidentally brushed against some boxes which clattered to the ground. Hearing the noise, one of the armed thieves rushed there as well. However, Sally hid herself well, holding her breath and hoping that the police would arrive soon. Just then, the first thief called out. Hey, we've got the cash. Let's get out of here. The two thieves rushed out straight into the waiting arms of the police. Hot air balloon. Tim loved to learn about how things worked. One day, Tim heard that some people were going to launch a hot air balloon from a nearby field. He begged and pleaded until his sister Fanny agreed to take him to watch. Early the next morning, he and Fanny went to the field. Soon the balloon was filled with air and began to rise higher and higher. Suddenly Fanny let out a cry of dismay. Tim had clung onto one of the anchoring ropes and was now dangling in midair. The crowd on the ground waved and gestured frantically, but the people in the balloon could not understand. When they finally realized what had happened, they pulled him up into the basket of the balloon. He was cold, bruised and exhausted and apologized sincerely. So the engineer of the balloon promised to take him up on the next flight the accident 
Evan was driving carefully down the mountain. However, as he rounded a bend, he saw a large truck headed straight for him, driving on the wrong side of the road. Evan swerved sharply, trying to avoid the truck. But the road was narrow and Evan's car went flying over the side of the mountain. Evan quickly undid his seat belt and wrenched open his door. With one last prayer, he leapt out of the falling car. He grabbed wildly at the hillside as he fell and luckily got a hold on a stout, almost dead birch tree. For a moment, he just hung there, catching his breath. Far below, Evan heard the sickening crunch of his car hitting the rocks. Then he slowly and painfully pulled himself up to a safer perch on the tree that had saved his life. For above a crowd had gathered. Soon people let down ropes to help him climb back up. They could hardly believe his miraculous escape. The bridge. Pip and Molly were playing in their grandmother's garden. After a while, they became bored. So Pip said, let's explore the woods. There was a thick forest near their grandmother's house and they were not allowed to go there alone. But today, since no one was looking, the two naughty children ran in. After walking a short distance, they came to a rickety old bridge across a stream. The moment they stepped on it, it creaked and groaned loudly. Still, the children ran across till Pip reached the middle of the bridge. He stepped right through the rotting wooden board. He was stuck with his leg dangling through the bridge. Molly tried hard to pull him out, but to no avail. Then she got a stone and tried to break the wood around his leg. Soon they were able to widen the hole enough for him to pull his leg out. They were relieved and ran straight back home. The Child on the Motorcycle John was driving to work one day. At a busy intersection, he saw a man on a motorcycle. He had a small child sitting behind him. The child seemed sleepy and kept jerking away. As John watched, the child's hold slackened. He slipped nearly sideways half of the bike. Luckily, the light turned red at that moment, so the motorcycle came to a stop. John knew he had to act quickly before traffic began to flow again. He dashed out of his car, weaving his way between vehicles till he reached the motorcycle. He was just in time because the lights turned green and the child slipped right off the bike. John managed to catch the child and thus saved his life. The other motorist saw what happened and stopped. The man on the motorcycle finally noticed what had happened. He thanked John, promising never to let the child ride so dangerously behind him again. The ambush. Samuel was driving down the mountains when he noticed a gleam in the distance. The sunlight was glinting off a crowbar. Someone was trying to put up a roadblock. Samuel stopped his car and crept closer to the rocky overhang to get a better view. He could see three men arranging stones on the road to make it look like a landslide. They were hoping to ambush unsuspecting travelers and loot them. Samuel first called the police. He was at a higher level than the ambushers. So he carefully crawled along the slope till he was directly above them. He made a rough slingshot using a rubber band and broken branch. Taking an aim, he shot a stream of pebbles right at the ambushers. They were so engrossed in trying to save themselves from the pebbles that they did not notice the police approaching. They were arrested and Samuel was able to continue on his way. The Puppets One night, a strange ticking sound woke Bella up. Looking out of her window, she saw her neighbor, Mrs. Dermont, in her living room. She was stuffing expensive-looking watches into puppets. Bella was suspicious, as there had recently been a robbery in a watch store. Soon Mrs. Dermont turned off the light and went to her bedroom. She thought, could she be hiding stolen goods? But I need proof before I can accuse her. A tall tree grew between the two houses. Bella used the tree to climb into Mrs. Dermont's open window. But where were the puppets? As she searched, she heard a noise outside the door. Mrs. Dermont was coming back. She ran back to the window. Just then, she saw an open drawer full of stolen stuff. She grabbed it and dashed back home, using the tree. The next morning, she showed the police the stolen goods and told them her suspicion. They searched Mrs. Dermont's house and found all the stolen watches. Deep Sea Adventure Harry worked as a deep sea diving instructor. Today he was taking three tourists out for a dive. There were sharks in these waters, so he wanted them to be extra careful. Two of them were attentive and followed all his instructions. The third Jerry thought he knew everything. I have been diving before, you know. He said arrogantly, I already know how to dive safely. 
soon the four of them were in the water however just as harry had feared they soon came across a shark jerry had ignored the safety instructions and started panicking his breathing sped up and he started using more oxygen than normal he got so confused that he started swimming in the wrong direction luckily harry noticed him in time he grabbed jerry and pulled him up to the surface of the water jerry was shaken up and apologized to harry for his foolishness The slippery slope. Jenny preferred to walk along dirt trails than take a proper road because she thought it was more exciting. Once her friends wanted to visit an old church across the moors. They all took their bicycles and rode along the paved path. But Jenny said, "Taking the path is so boring. I'll ride cross country." One of her friends, Emma, was uneasy. She told the others, "I don't think it's safe for her to go alone. I will follow her." Jenny had already sped off and Emma followed. 10 minutes later Emma gasped in horror it had rained the night before and the ground was slippery in places Jenny was riding much too fast and suddenly her cycle slipped she went sliding down the slope Emma immediately stopped her cycle and ran down she grabbed Jenny's hand and pulled her back from the edge of the moor Jenny could not believe what had happened and thanked Emma again and again The hidden basement Reggie had inherited an old country house from his grandparents. He came to look the house over and was surprised to see that it was in a bad shape. In many places the roof tiles were missing and there were damp patches on the walls. He wondered why his grandparents had left him such a terrible house. Inside the house was musty and damp. Reggie was walking through the kitchen when the floorboards under him creaked loudly. Before he knew it, the rotten floor had splintered, pitching him into a dark hidden basement below. For a moment, Reggie was too shocked to move. Luckily, he had not broken any limbs. He gradually became aware of his surroundings. There were old-fashioned trunks all around. When he opened them, he was shocked to see that they were filled with gold coins. His grandparents had left him a treasure. Defusing a bomb. Jason was a member of the bomb squad. In his career, he had seen almost every kind of explosive designed by a man. One of the toughest bombs to defuse was a hidden bomb in Afghanistan. One day, his unit was sent into a recently captured building. One of his officers stepped onto the upper level and everyone stilled. They all heard a distinctive click. The officer had stepped on a hidden trigger. Jason and his team immediately set about trying to access the bomb, but it was almost impossible to locate where the bomb was. Meanwhile, the officer on the trigger could not move a muscle or the bomb would explode. After several tense moments a soldier noticed a newly plastered section of wall carefully removing the bricks they at last uncovered the time bomb ticking away Jason at once set about defusing it managing to do so just with a few seconds to spare saving a life Jimmy was walking through a field when he heard a strange rustling sound he stopped and looked around in confusion stop right there rasped a harsh voice He looked up to see an old haggard man pointing a pistol at him. His breath caught and he started perspiring in fear. Why was this old man threatening him? Wait, he stammered. What is the matter? Before he could react, the man fired. Jimmy crumpled into a heap on the ground. Slowly he realized that he was not hurt. He sat up and looked around confused. The old man with the gun had shuffled over to his right and was bent over something on the ground. He stood up holding a long rattlesnake. He would have bitten you if I hadn't shot him," said the old man. Jimmy finally breathed in relief and said, "Thank you. I really thought I was done for." Monkey business. One evening, Shelly was walking home from the market. Suddenly, she heard a strange chattering sound. Looking up into the trees, she saw a monkey staring right down at her. Shelly had heard that monkeys attack people if they look scared. So, she continued to walk along confidently. She had only walked a few steps when one of the monkeys jumped down and landed right in front of her. The monkey cautiously stretched out a paw. Shelly did not move a muscle. The monkey patted Shelly's shopping bag and suddenly grabbed it and ran. Shelly was stunned for a moment. Then she grabbed a stick that was lying nearby and ran after the monkey. The monkey cheekily threw down different items from her shopping bag. By now a crowd had gathered. 
a few children gathered shelly's things and said you are lucky it did not attack you and only took your shopping bags the elevator alice was late for her interview so she rushed into the tall skyscraper she had to go to an office on the 56th floor alice got into the elevator along with a young man and an old lady the elevator had just passed the 20th floor when the lights flickered and the elevator stopped with a jerk the young man immediately pressed the emergency button but nothing happened then suddenly the lift seemed to move creaking a little and tilting to one side this did not seem good together alice and the young man pushed open the hatch on top of the lift car they could now clearly see that one of the lift cables was about to snap luckily the opening for the 21st floor was not far alice pulled up the old lady and then helped the young man out together all three managed to reach the 21st floor safely just as the cable finally snapped the priceless paintings edward was a famous painter Once Edward found his neighbor Jack in a studio touching one of his new paintings he was annoyed and sent him away another day he found that some of his canvases had been moved slightly he decided to find out what was going on that night he hid in a studio at midnight jack crept into the studio he went to one of the canvases and after an hour left the next day edward called the police inspector together they examined the canvas jack had touched certain parts of the painting seemed lumpy Edward scrubbed the paint carefully and found a small stone hidden in the paint. He cleaned it and gasped. It was a diamond. The inspector explained, "Jack is hiding stolen diamonds in your paintings. After a few months, he would remove them and sell them without any fear." Jack was soon arrested. Edward could finally paint in peace again. Motorboat adventure. Dan and Mary were jetting through the water on a motorboat. One summer day, after a while, they cut the engine, letting the boat float. Mary took out her binoculars and started observing the seabirds. Suddenly, she noticed that the birds flew off together. Something had scared them. Mary carefully scanned the water. She gasped. A shark fin broke the surface of the water. As she watched, the fin started circling the boat. With each circle, it came closer and closer. Dan waited till the shark was at the farthest point from the boat. Then he gunned the engine and shot out across the water. Mary looked back and saw the fin cutting through the water, following them. Dan sped up, and they finally reached the docks. They dashed to the lifeguard station and alerted them about the shark. It was a few days before they felt safe enough to go out to the sea again. Hostage. Alex was speaking to the bank manager when a shot rang out. Two masked men with pistol commanded. Everyone on the floor now. Everyone scrambled to the ground. Alex sat under a table where he could not be seen. The thieves took away everyone's phone, so none could alert the police. The only one who could call was Alex, and he had forgotten his phone at home. In the meantime, the thieves broke into the safe of the bank and started dragging out the bags of cash. Looking at the window, Alex had an idea. He moved in such manner that the sunlight fell on his watch, creating a bright reflection on the wall. He angled his watch so that anyone outside might see the flashes. Then, in Morse code, he flashed a message: "SOS." A girl walking outside noticed the flashes and alerted the police at once. Within minutes, the police had freed the hostages thanks to Alex's quick thinking. The secret passage. Dinah and Ron had recently bought a house. One day, Dinah was cleaning out a cupboard when she felt a small lever. When she pressed the lever, the back of the cupboard moved, revealing a passageway. Dinah immediately called Ron, and the two started exploring the passage. It was long and dark. After almost 15 minutes of walking, the two emerged into a large underground cavern. There were some pouches of old gold coins as well as some more recent bags and boxes. Dinah said, "I think a thief found the other opening of this passage. He must be using this as a hiding place for his loot." They continued to follow the passage and Dinah was right. The passage opened out in a cave near the beach. They shared their finds with the police. A few days later, the police hid in the passage and caught the thief who had been using the passage for years.
escape from the Nazis. During the World War II, the Nazis targeted the Jews. Abraham had heard terrible stories about the Nazis torturing the Jews, but he could not believe it. Then one day on his way home, he heard two Nazi officers talking. They were planning to capture the Jews in his neighborhood the very next day. Abraham rushed home and alerted his neighbors. Wrapping themselves as warmly as possible, they silently slipped out of their houses in the dark of night. On they trudged till the light of dawn made it unsafe for them to move. They hid in ditches and forests all day. At night again, they walked till they reached the border of Hungary. Here, they would find safe shelter, but the border was heavily patrolled. Abraham led them silently till they found a break in the wire fence. Holding their breath in case they were spotted, they slowly inched their way across the border. They were safe at last. The Launch Alexander was a scientist who worked for the International Space Program. Today, their newest space shuttle was to be launched. Throughout the last week, however, things had been going wrong. One day, important calculations were missing. The next day, there were errors in the computer system. Alexandra thought someone was trying to sabotage their efforts. There were just two hours before the launch. Alexandra decided to check the shuttle one last time. Just as she entered the launch area, she noticed someone sneak out of the shuttle. She immediately noticed that someone had opened the valves of the reserve oxygen tanks of the shuttle. Alexandra immediately ran to the surveillance wing to see who had been there last. She was shocked to see that it was her assistant, Roderick. He was jealous of her and wanted to ruin her project. She called the security and had him arrested. Alexandra fixed all the issues and the launch was a huge success. The Submarine Captain Finch was carrying important cargo, a logged strong box containing secret treaty papers between two European countries. Everything seemed to be alright, but the captain was uneasy. Suddenly, the lookout shouted out, Captain, here's something. Captain Finch immediately scanned the ocean. There he saw the small periscope breaking the surface of the water, a spy submarine. He alerted his crew at once. Within five minutes, his sensors sounded an alarm. The submarine had launched a torpedo. If it hit the ship, they would surely sink. Captain Finch immediately changed direction and narrowly missed the torpedo. But the danger had not passed. Within moments, the submarine had changed direction and launched the second torpedo. Immediately, the captain turned the wheel again, steering the ship away. At the same time, he launched the hidden torpedoes from his own ship. For a moment, everything was still. Then suddenly, there was a huge explosion underwater. They had hit the spy submarine and were now safe. Air Raid During the Second World War, Jane worked at the local radio station. One day, Jane had just entered the radio station when her boss ran up to her in agitation. The enemy is going to conduct air raids. We must warn the people. Jane nodded and immediately started a broadcast. Then she ran home and helped her neighbors to the nearest bomb shelter. The shelter was dark but secure. The people sat inside, tense and waiting. Suddenly, there was an ominous quiet, followed by an earth-shaking boom. The air raid had started. However, thanks to the broadcast, everyone was safe and sound. Some buildings were damaged, but the people were cheerful and made the most of a hard situation. For months, the people dreaded the sound of the siren that warned them of air raids. Yet, they never gave up hope and they continue to support their country. It was their spirit that won the war. The Race Steve was the best race car driver around. One day a man came up to him and said, I could make you a rich man. You just have to lose one round of this race. The man wanted him to cheat and help trick the race. Steve ordered the man to leave at once. He then forgot all about it and made his way to the car. Minutes later, the race started. Midway through, Steve realized that someone had tampered with his car. The fuel line seemed to have been cut because the car was losing oil at a very fast rate. Because of the dripping oil, his tires started to skid. But Steve's experience and control saved him. He guided the car at a steady pace, winning the race. Immediately afterwards, Steve got his car checked and sure enough, the fuel line was slashed. Steve got the suspicious man arrested and always double-checked his car himself from then on.
the duel. John the Marquis of Gerwin had just found out that his cousin Bertram was a spy against the country. If the king's soldiers found out, not only would Bertram be hanged for treason, but the family name would also be ruined. He tried to talk to Bertram and convince him to stop his dangerous dealings, but he would not listen. John had no choice. He challenged Bertram to a duel. They met in a meadow outside London. The cousins were equally skilled swordsmen, and neither seemed to give an inch to the opponent. Finally, John managed to slash Bertram's arm. Blood dripped down his sleeve, but he did not give up. On and on they fought, till at last Bertram fell. He was severely wounded and would take months to recover. John said sadly, "Well, cousin, you can't be a spy when you are ill, and you can't be tried for treason either." He had saved his family's honor. Mirza Haider. When the evil Amir took over Samarkand, Mirza Haider had to flee. Only forty of his closest officers rode with him. They rode hard, trying to reach the safety of Hindustan. Otherwise, the Amir would surely try to kill them. Soon, they were among the steep and treacherous mountain passes of the Himalayas. High up, water froze to ice, leaving nothing to drink. Food grew scarce. The horsemen had never seen many of the local plants before, and some ate poisonous leaves. Others could hardly breathe, for they were high up in the mountains, where the air was thin. Without water, food, and air, how could they survive? One by one, many of his officers died, followed by the horses. Yet Mirza Haider did not give up. Out of forty officers, only fifteen were left when he finally crossed the mountains into the valley of Kashmir. But the bravery of those who died was never forgotten. The poachers. Terence was a forest ranger. There had been a series of attacks on wild animals in the last few weeks, and the rangers were determined to catch the poachers. Tonight, Terence had tracked a large herd of elephants. They were heading straight for a local watering hole. Sir Terence hid himself in a tall tree and waited. For a long time, the only sound in the forest was that made by the animals. Then, around midnight, he heard the hoot of an owl. He knew that was a fake bird call. Scanning the undergrowth through his night vision goggles, he soon located two poachers. They had rifles with silencers and were taking aim at the largest tusker. Immediately, Terence took aim as well. With a perfect aim, he shot the tranquilizer darts at the poachers. Within moments, they were both unconscious. Terence and the other rangers moved in swiftly, arresting them and ensuring that the animals were safe. The cruise adventure. Anna was on a cruise ship with about 50 people on board. One night after dinner, Anna was standing on the upper deck, admiring the moonlight. Suddenly, she heard a scuffle and a small splash. Looking over, she clearly saw a figure sinking in the water and another running away from the deck below. Anna ran down and dived into the sea. She barely managed to save an old man, leading him to the captain. Anna told him everything. He said. Ma'am, let me gather everyone by a storm warning siren. A moment later, the warning siren rang out, and all the passengers gathered on the deck. Besides, old Mr. Hubbs, whom Anna had saved and who lay down in the captain's cabin, a wicked man, Nat Daniels, was missing. A moment later, Nat came running to the deck, looking sly and uncomfortable. The captain and his guards caught Nat at once for trying to kill Mr. Hubbs. The Merchant's Adventure. Meer Singh was going to Bukhara from Punjab as a part of a trading caravan. He had heard of the wonderful markets there and was excited to see them himself. The caravan had just entered the passes of Afghanistan. However, when they were attacked by a tribe of Pashtuns, they plundered the goods and sold the merchants to a slave trader. A month later, Meer Singh found himself in the market at Bukhara. However, now he was no longer a merchant. He was being sold as a slave. Since he was young and strong, he was soon sold to a local silk merchant. Meer Singh tried to escape, but each time he was caught and brought back. Finally, one day his master fell ill. Meer Singh thought, "This is my chance." He sneaked out in the night and, after hiding for three days, finally found a caravan going to India. He was going home at last. Pirates of the Arabian Sea. At one time, the Arabian Sea was the busiest trading route in the world. However, there was always one danger to be faced in these waters: pirates. 
They lived on remote islands, paid no taxes and had no rulers. Divan was a pirate. His parents had been killed by tax collectors, but he had fled. Hiding on a ship, he had finally arrived alone, scared and hungry on a small island. From time to time, others like him had landed there and soon he had a crew. They built their own ship and started plundering the rich merchant ships. Today, Divan's ship lay in wait. Soon an Indian merchant ship passed by. Divan's ship gave a hot chase. The merchants started shooting, but to no avail. The pirates were too quick and before long had captured the merchant ship. They quickly transferred all the money and valuables to their ship and sailed off into the mist, never to be caught. The Camel Race Ali was excited for his first camel race. His family had been participating in the race for years and his father had won many times. Just then, he saw his closest competitor, Omar. They hated each other. Ali could not bear the thought of being defeated by him. Soon, it was time for the race to begin. A huge shouting crowd had gathered to watch. As soon as the starting shot was heard, the camels raced off. When they were halfway through, Ali noticed Umar just a little to his right. He had a knife in his hand. Umar tried to stab Ali, but Ali just spurred his camel on faster and escaped. Twisting back, Ali grabbed Umar's hand and threw a punch. Ali did not wait for more, but sped off and soon won the race. As for Umar, when the others learned of his treachery, they punished him severely. The Gypsies A band of gypsies had set up a camp in the commons near Tidewell. The younger villagers were excited and visited the camp to buy embroidered clothes or to get their fortune told. But the older villagers were not happy. Whenever a gypsy camp came to the area, there were always many thefts. This time, the vicar's wife lost a ruby brooch, while the shopkeeper's wife couldn't find her emerald ring. Earrings, necklaces, bracelets, almost every house in the village had been robbed. When Philip, a young policeman, ordered a search in the gypsy camp, they found nothing. Then he decided to visit the gypsy camp in disguise. Dressed as a farmer, he sat to get his fortune told. The fortune teller peered into a dirty-looking glass ball and said, I see a great future for you. I'm sure you do, Philip said. He grabbed the glass ball and flipped it over. It was full of stolen jewellery. The Trojan Horse Greece and Troy had been fighting bitterly without a pause. The Prince of Troy had abducted Helen of Greece and refused to let her go. Both sides were equally matched and even after months and years, neither side could win. Finally, the Greeks had an idea. They built a huge hollow wooden horse and decorated it richly. That night, they left it outside the gates of Troy. In the morning, the Trojans saw the lovely horse and wheeled it into the city. They rejoiced. This is a gift from the Greeks to indicate that they give up the fight. We have won. All day, the Trojans celebrated their victory. But that night, when they were all asleep, a strange thing happened. From inside the wooden horse, the best Greek warriors emerged. They had hidden inside the whole day patiently. But now they swiftly captured and defeated the Trojans. At last, the war was over. The Wings of Icarus Daedalus was one of the most famous Athenian inventors. He had created a wonderful maze for King Minos of Crete. However, the cruel king imprisoned Daedalus and his son Icarus so that they might never tell anyone how to escape from the maze. Still, Daedalus made plans for their escape. For months, he collected bird feathers. He collected wax from the candles in their cell. Using these, he created two sets of wings. He strapped one set onto his own shoulders and another into Icarus. He warned his son, If you fly too high, the wax will melt. If you fly too low, the sea spray will wet the wings. In either case, you will fall. Icarus promised to take care and they both flew off. Didalus landed onto safe land. However, Icarus forgot his father's words. Thrilled with the feeling of flying, he flew too high. The wax melted and the feathers came unglued. Icarus fell into the sea and was drowned. Hercules and the Nemean Lion Hercules was one of the greatest Greek heroes. Once his cousin, King Eurythius ordered him to find and kill the Nemean Lion. The Nemean Lion would capture young women. To rescue them, warriors from nearby regions would enter the lion's cave. The lion would at first pretend to be a young woman. When the warrior was near enough, it would change its form and attack. When Hercules heard this, he moved to the cave at once. However, he was not fooled by the lion's tricks and started shooting arrows at it. He was surprised 
to note that the lion's golden fur was stronger than armor. Hercules then blocked both entrances to the lion's cave and attacked it with his club. This time he was able to defeat it. Since the lion's skin was stronger than metal, he used the lion's own claw to tear through it, using it as his armor from then on. Oedipus and Cyclops Oedipus was sailing home when his ship was caught in a terrible storm. The next morning, his ship washed ashore a small island. Oedipus and his crew wandered the island but saw no one. Finally, they took shelter in a large cave. To their surprise, the cave was well stocked with food. Oedipus warned them not to touch the food, but his crew did not listen. Soon, they were all fast asleep. Only Oedipus was awake. Suddenly, the ground trembled and shook and a huge monster with only one eye entered the cave. It was Cyclops. Oedipus watched in horror as Cyclops picked two of his crew and ate them up. Then he went to sleep. Luckily, Oedipus had heard of Cyclops. He knew the monster's weakness was his eye. He sharpened a wooden stake which he plunged into Cyclops' eye. The spell on his crew was broken the moment the monster died and they all escaped quickly. The Marathon Runner Gary woke up at 4 am every morning and went running. He was building his speed and stamina so that he might participate in this year's marathon. There were still 6 months to the event but he wanted to be well prepared. One day, while running, Gary tripped over a loose pebble and fractured his foot. His foot was in a cast and he could no longer run. He was very upset and hardly spoke to anyone anymore. One day, Gary was moving through the supermarket on his crutches when he saw a boy snatch an old lady's purse and dash away. Immediately, Gary followed him. Though he was on crutches, he was still faster than the thief. Within minutes, he had tripped the boy using the crutches and retrieved the purse. From that day, Gary became more hopeful and positive. When the cast was removed, he started training again and was able to run in the marathon after all. Japara's Tribe Japara was a warrior. He was still young, but he was already one of the best warriors of his tribe. One day, Japara was out hunting with some others. When he looked up and saw a flock of birds suddenly change direction, he felt it was an omen and told the others. We must hurry home. They immediately turned back, but they had gone quite far out and it was evening before they finally reached home. From afar, they could hear loud shouts and screams. Their tribe had been attacked. Japara divided his warriors into two groups and told them to surround the camp. Stealthily, they approached the camp, just as the head of the enemy tribe was about to kill Japara's chief. At a signal, Japara's warriors rose and charged forward. The enemy tribe was soon defeated. The tribe praised Japara for his bravery, strength and foresight and made him the next chief of the tribe. The Lion and the Bay A young African hunter stopped at a lake for water. Suddenly he heard a low growl and looked up to see a massive lion. The lion had recently fed and was not hungry, so he placed the boy high up in the branches of a nearby tree. Then the lion lay down at the base of the tree and went to sleep. The boy wondered what to do. If he climbed down, the lion would kill him. The only way to escape was to signal his tribe in some way. The hunter had an idea. He tore off a small twig from the tree and started rubbing it in a small hollow. After a few minutes, the friction created a small plume of smoke. In his village, the people saw the smoke signal and immediately understood that someone was in danger. Grabbing their weapons, they came upon the tree trapped the sleeping lion and rescued the young hunter. The Range Robbers Throughout the harsh winter, Ben Johnson had worked hard to feed his cattle. Now it was time to sell them. However, when the rancher and his cowboys started rounding them up, they found that several head of cattle were missing. Ben suspected that his neighbor Harrison was the thief, but he had no proof. One day, Ben was mending the fences in an outlying part of his ranch. Suddenly, he noticed some hoof prints. He called a couple of his cowboys and they followed the prints. The winding trail led them to a hidden rocky basin. There, guarded by two of Harrison's men were the missing cattle. Signaling his men, Ben moved forward silently. A rolling pebble alerted Harrison's men and they started firing. Ben and his men fought back and before long captured the thieves. That evening, the sheriff arrested Harrison. Ben didn't lose any more cattle and made a good profit from the sale that year.
escaped from fire. A young English gentleman was traveling through the countryside. As he was passing through a tribal village, he saw a huge crowd. He pushed his way through the crowd and stopped in surprise. At the center of the crowd was a beautiful young girl. He asked one of the villagers, "What is happening?" The man replied, "Sir, this girl is a witch. We are going to burn her." The gentleman was horrified. He understood that since the girl was wearing modern clothes like him, they thought she was a witch. So he decided to save the girl's life. He saw them building a pyre and hid in the space underneath. Then when they tied the girl onto the pyre, he reached up and stealthily cut the ropes around her feet. The minute they set the pyre on fire, however, he reared up, grabbed the girl and rode off. It all happened so fast that the villagers thought it was the witch's magic. Conquering Everest In 1953, a British expedition set out to conquer the highest peak in the world, Mount Everest. The team included 14 climbers and 350 porters to carry their equipment. Weather conditions were good, and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay led them expertly forward. Edmund Hillary enjoyed the thrill and challenge of climbing, but as the trek progressed, he found it increasingly difficult to sleep or even rest for more than a few hours at a time. Once Hillary slipped and fell down a crevasse. It was only his presence of mind and the rope linking him to the other climbers that kept him safe. With each challenge, the climbers grew more determined. Finally, they were just 800 meters from the summit. Now came the most difficult part. With heavy weatherproof clothing and oxygen masks, the climbers scaled up the extremely steep summit. They had done it. Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay were the first men to conquer Mount Everest. The Fort of Singar In 1670, the Marathas attacked the Fort of Singar or Lion Fort. The fort was located on a steep cliff. Its location gave it a strong natural protection and made it almost impossible to capture from outside. The fort was under the Mughal commander, Mirza Raja Jai Singh. However, Shivaji was determined to gain control. Shivaji's brilliant officer, Tanaji, had a plan. One dark night, the Maratha army reached the fort. Tanaji tied a strong rope to a monitor lizard named Yashwanti. He threw the lizard towards the top of the fortress walls. Using the strong suction on her fingertips, the lizard gripped the wall. One by one, 342 Maratha soldiers quickly climbed up the rope. Once inside the fort, a fierce battle started between the Marathas and the Mughals. Finally, the Marathas won, even though Tanaji was killed in the battle. When Shivaji heard this, he said, "We have won the lion fort, but lost the lion." Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Book House.